shorter. Than okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're good? Yeah, you're going to you're gonna take What music it. do you want? Okay. Well, you said show you the national yeah. anthem. Yeah. Rio, can you give us the national anthem? Oh, yeah. Very loud. Okay. First or two. Okay. Do, do you, have, you have some music you can play or something? Um, what do we, we face this way or what do we do? Uh, yeah, sure. Black, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the World Wrestling Federation music. <laughs> no, it's going to be very calm. <laughs> calm. <laughs> This is the song that unites us. Yes. <laughs> and then makes us. The blood, sweat, and tears of our true father. You can't take a knee. <laughs> you get shot on the spot. You take a knee, but you don't get a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't get back up. <laughs> so we'll take your refreshments. Yours. That's my first question. Yeah. Refreshments? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, popcorn. Maybe, maybe there's a vent. Uh, no food in the sanctuary. <laughs> no food in the sanctuary except water. According to Greg. <laughs> that sounds authoritarian. Yes, it does. It's intended to. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work. It's not going to work. Let's just begin with a prayer then. What do you, what do you think? Okay. Yeah. Well, got it? No? Okay. Okay. Someone pray. President. Okay, uh, let us pray. Dearest Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all your love and, and guidance to us. Father, we are truly so grateful, Father, to, to be accepted into your lineage, the lineage of our true Father, the second King and Queen of Chanukuk. Father, please guide this meeting. We can uh, understand each other better and uh, be free to move forward as, as our King is, is urging us to do. I thank you and report this name of Richard Mio Panzer, Blessed Central Family. Adieu. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Um, I just would like to make, uh, explain a few things. So, I, I, first of all, I want to mention that uh, actually Janine Takahashi uh, suggested this idea. Hi, Janine. Hi. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure there are a few others who suggested the idea of the town hall. So we thought it was a good idea, and then that's why we're having this today. Um, so our intention is to to answer every question that is asked, uh, or if we can't answer it, we'll explain why why we why we can't answer it. Um, I would like to let everyone have a chance to ask all their questions. But we want to take turns. Yeah. So the, the, our idea is that each person can ask one or two questions at a time and get, hopefully get some kind of answer and then move on to other people and then we'll circle back. So if you have more questions, just be patient because we want to give everyone a chance to you know, ask one or two questions. So you'll, you'll get a chance to ask, ask all your questions. Um, we, we don't need to, you know, shout or get, you know, let, let's, we're all brothers and sisters. I, we, all, we, all, we all love true parents, right? So that's, that's um, our assumption here. And, uh, yeah, so Lowell, Lowell Elinson has agreed to be the moderator. So thank you, Lowell. Really appreciate that. Yeah. King Lowell. And... Uh, Tim will introduce our staff and our their job descriptions, and then Lourdes has something she wants to say as well. So, um, Lowell, why don't you take over, and I, I guess Tim has something. Welcome, everybody. So I know in some cases probably people have been putting a lot of thought already into questions that they want to, uh, to ask, but if you haven't, 
if you're not one of those that have already, you know, invested a lot of energy, let's not uh, take this time for granted. If you have any any kind of uh, question or, or, or you're interested in what direction Sanctuary Ministry is going, what's happening on the worldwide scale. These guys all are in the international meetings. They have a lot of understanding about what's going on around the world. So I know some people are thinking about what's happening here in the sanctuary community, but also there's a lot going on out there. So as the, if the Holy Spirit moves you, don't hesitate to, to ask any kind of uh, question about all the wonderful things that are happening in the Providence right now. Because uh, I, I know there's a lot. There's a lot out there. So. It'll be inspiring to hear uh, hear about those things as well. So um, originally we were Richard said we wanted to do like two questions per person so that we can keep keep it moving and everybody will have a, a chance. Uh, originally we were going to move the microphone around to, to that the microphone would be brought to you, but instead I think for to make it a little easier, you can see there's a microphone on the stand there. So if you have your questions just get up and go to the microphone. So we won't be passing the microphone around. You'll have to get up and, and uh, go to, the, to that position to ask your question. And I didn't know, maybe the panel now, if I could ask a first question to the panel, when people are addressing their question, uh, should they address the person that they want to get the answer from? Or will you guys decide amongst yourself who's best or most qualified to, uh, to give the answer? How will that work? I, I think we, we, we may have, I think we should decide who can, who can answer it best. Okay, yeah. so they don't necessarily need to add, uh, yeah. address yeah. A, a specific person. So that's just a guideline as you're preparing your questions. Maybe ask your question and they'll, they'll decide who is the most qualified to answer. Shall I go ahead and introduce the staff? Yeah. Go. Okay, uh, Ted, it'll be just a minute. Uh, um, uh, I'm Tim Elder, and uh, I joined the staff in uh, 2014, and I was actually the first one. Um, and I was actually, uh, after uh, Hyung Jin came to Pennsylvania in 2013, um, I was asked to come here earlier, but I kept resisting, and I repent for that. And I finally I came here in uh, June of uh, 2014. And for a while, I was the uh, only uh, member of the staff. Uh, but in the, uh, about the spring of uh, 2015, it became obvious uh, to uh, the king uh, that uh, uh, there was uh, uh, much more to do than I could possibly handle alone. <clears throat> and so a second person was uh, brought onto the staff, uh, and that was Greg. Uh, and he took over uh, the finances, uh, he took over uh, building management, uh, facilities management, and he took over uh, personnel issues, and new business development, and uh, also uh, he, in his job description here, he calls himself the garbage man. But uh, <laughs> I hope we're all garbage people, by the way. I hope we all, uh, when we see garbage, we pick it up. But anyway, uh, Greg uh, certainly does far more than his uh, share of that. Uh, he uh, makes sure that the garbage is uh, put out there in the dumpster and it and is picked up properly. Then uh, the uh, third person to come on uh, was Lourdes, uh, because uh, as Greg and I were working, uh, we started to do more and more events. Uh, in 2016, we actually, until through 2016, we were only doing um, two holy days a year, two, basically two, um, two holy days. Um, well, actually, 2015, I'm sorry, 2015, we were only doing two holy days a year. Uh, and, and, uh, and we were not doing that many events, but we wanted to do more. And we needed someone to uh, coordinate those events. And so uh, Lourdes was brought on for that. And also... Uh, another uh, job she was given was to be my assistant in the uh, world, uh, world Missions because when, when Greg came on, I uh, stayed on as the World Missions Department head and uh, we wanted to expand our, uh, the King's uh, Foundation throughout the world. And so uh, uh, Lourdes uh, has been doing that and uh, she's actually done the lion's share of the work of that. I've been focusing on uh, Korea and Japan, but Europe, Africa, South America, um, I would say that, and, and also Oceania, I would say that Lord has uh, done a uh, uh, lion's share of, the, of that work. And then more recently, she's been uh, given another uh, assignment, which is to uh, coordinate uh, guests who come on to the uh, King's Report. Uh, we've had, uh, she's brought on a, a New York Times bestseller. She's brought on uh, one of the, um, some of the most um, uh, prominent people in this area. And then the, uh, the last person to, among us uh, to come on was... Uh, uh, was uh, Richard, 
and uh, uh, Richard Panzer is responsible for outreach, coordination, and education for unification and sanctuary brothers and sisters in North America. Uh, he has developed a series of presentations, videos, and essays uh, explaining True Father's teachings about his successor in eight great textbooks. Um, he also communicates with the sanctuary coordinators and brothers and sisters in the USA and Canada each week and shares reports of sanctuary activities uh, around the world uh, with them. Uh, he currently is working with the Carrie Williams and Sanctuary USA Education Director to finish review and re revise the English OSDP uh, teachers, teacher's Manual, updating the two-day Divine Principle Lectures with OSDP content. Okay, so that uh, uh, is uh, my introduction of the staff. Okay, back to you. Back to you, uh, Lowell. Lowell. Okay, so let's go right into our questions. Actually, I think uh, there's one more item on the agenda. There's Lourdes would like to say something. Oh. Yeah. You, you don't have a copy of this? I do. You do. Um, okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just am deeply honored to be here uh, working with us, brothers and sisters. Um, there's one thing I want to say um, to our brother. Jamal Johnson, he's not here today, but I wanted to ask for him to apologize, about my apologies to him. Um, I've said some things online and in person to him that he felt I crossed the line. I said that he disrespected the king, and I sincerely don't think he does. I think he's a, a, a good brother that God has chosen to be here, and uh, I really am sorry, Jamal, if he hurt you. And Thank you. For also, brothers and sisters, I did say um, recently I posted some things online that I'm not very proud of. <laughs> um, I use an alien, I actually have two. <laughs> but my apologies, I feel sad that I, I used that time that uh, is actually my Sabbath, but I felt that uh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, I, um, it's, not, it's not me, it was something just crazy thing that came to my mind. And uh, I want for you to please accept my apologies for that. Thank you. Thank you, Lourdes. OK, uh, okay, we can begin uh, the question and answers. Okay, Ted? Maybe one thing, just another last little bit of housekeeping. <clears throat> Everybody, of course, here we know, we know you. But as you give your question, I think this is being recorded, and maybe some people will pick it up later. Why don't you introduce yourself before you do your question? I'm Ted O'Grady. Feel honored to be here. Also, feel a lot of love for everyone here. Lourdes, I've grown to love Lourdes. <laughs> uh, grown to know her a bit. And uh, aside from the controversy that's going on, I'm not really taking sides. But uh, I feel that everyone here is motivated from the heart of God. That's for sure. That's a beautiful thing. Okay, so I'm a new I'm a new guy here. I've moved into the area recently. Very kind to welcome me in. Thank you very much. Okay, and that's uh, again a uh, personal decision to do that. Um, so my what's up on my heart is uh, about outreach. Because yeah. uh, I've have some contacts outside, having been in the UK and started with sanctuary <laughs> over there. Uh, starting our own ministry over there in East London, then coming over here, and then uh, connecting with some of the other sanctuary brothers and sisters outside, uh, particularly Kevin and Tammy Brugman in Dallas. Uh, and we've kind of discussed things about Christian outreach. They're a couple, and they're kings and queens. King, uh, King Kevin, King Tammy, Queen Tammy, right? And they are members of the Gateway Church in Dallas, Texas, which has a tremendous outreach ministry particularly a political expression of that. So I guess my question is, and knowing Richard from 30 years ago in AFC days, um, how, do, how does the Sanctuary Church see itself as a political expression now in this time? So what, what is the inspiration or also the, um, the, the connection out to the other sanctuary ministries in the country and world? How are we going to express ourselves politically? How are we going to, motive, mo how are we going to put our faith into practice to impact the society. Okay, Tim. Yeah. 
I think soon after I came here, uh, the king described a sanctuary church to me uh, this way. That, and I, um, you'll have to check with him to make sure I get this right. But uh, I believe he told me that we are a free association of blessed families, each of whom have their own um, ministries. And the church is a place where people are trained uh, to uh, become able to do ministries or to... to, to to become inspired to do certain ministries or to uh, uh, you know, develop further their abilities to, to do certain ministries. Uh, and so I think what Ted just uh, described uh, is a, a ministry that can be taken up by uh, individual uh, blessed families. Um, uh, recently, the King has been, through the King's report, uh, has been encouraging um, us to become more involved in our uh, local politics, um, and and I, I know that uh, I think he's talking with some people about running for county commissioner here in this area, for example, and other ways. But I think um, uh, each uh, blessed family can, as they are praying about their ministries, uh, you know, and each family can have more than one. Uh, this is perhaps a one thing that uh, pray about. That's my answer. Yeah, I think. Uh what the king has also been uh, emphasizing, you know, really empowering blessed families to pursue their passions. And I think that's one of the th fundamental things that really inspires me about uh, the king's ministry here is to the whole purpose is to empower people to go out and do their own YouTube channels and to begin to um, attract like minded people uh, to whatever that passion is. I know at our at our farm project, for example, that's our passion, uh, the blessed families that are gathered there. It's a, a grassroots thing. It's not, some people say it's owned by Sanctuary Church. It's not. <laughs> you know, it's really, a, it's really blessed families uh, that feel passionate about intentional community and about uh, organic lifestyle farming. And the king has been nothing but supportive of that. And I think that's an example uh, of what... Uh, you know, it's healthy. It's it's healthy for us not to be centralized in our thinking here at the church, but to follow the example of decentralization through home church and tribal messiahship. I think that's the success of the King's ministry, if we can all be empowered to pursue what we feel really driven to pursue. And I think that's a, that's a healthy church on a global scale. And so I think um, that's what that's what Father has always taught. He's always fought, you know, taught tribal messiahship, and that's really on a local level. But introduce yeah, let's go to two. Okay. If you have many, do two, and then let the next person come to the okay. mic. Okay. And, uh, and um, when, when the mic's free again, continue on. All right. Well, I'm Janine Takahashi, and I'm from New Jersey, and I come here every Sunday. So, um, I have a, a question that deals with, I, I guess, Lourdes's recent online indiscretions and uh, you know taking aliases and I'm really glad that you actually apologize for that you know publicly it's a very good thing that you did that um, but I have uh, I'm, I'm very concerned that that kind of behavior uh, even though we all make mistakes but if this happens again what will be the consequences you know asking maybe to to Richard, because you are uh, kind of the leader for the uh, American, I guess, are you for the U.S.? Well, actually, I, I am I am not... Uh, not in charge of... I'm not the, in charge staff, of right? anybody. All right. I, I, t Tim, he's I, my boss. I, he's okay. the eldest. So. <laughs> well, uh, if, that, if that happened again or other people were caught doing that again, you know, what would you, what would you do? First of all, uh, Lourdes' activities in her... Um, uh, Facebook uh, uh, discussion groups and so forth uh, is a ministry that has been blessed by the king, but it is her uh, personal ministry. 
just as Greg is doing uh, Bluestone Farms, uh, Lourdes is doing this uh, ministry online. And so just if, uh, if, if, if Greg were to do something that uh, people found objectionable at the Bluestone Farms, uh, the, the church would not get involved with that. He would have to handle it himself. So I, I think, understand that, yes. So I think uh, this also, uh, in Lourdes' case as well, I think is properly dealt with uh, by the people who are relating to that ministry. And uh, uh, I, uh, I don't see a need for me or the church to become involved in that. Actually, I, I, I have a comment. Um, you know, I think many people are expecting the sanctuary church to make a response to everything that Loris does. <laughs> no, and, but let no me just, that's not what I expect. No, I, no, I understand that. But I just want you to know, I'm, I just be, I'm being honest here. Okay, even though there's been no, quote, official response, I, I, I would like everyone here to know that on numerous occasions, I've let Lourdes know when I felt that she was being an idiot, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm just being honest here, okay? So there, don't, don't assume that just because we don't say anything publicly that I, I, I read Facebook, I see what people write, um, I try to be aware of what people are saying, and if I see something that I think, I mean, to be honest here, I, 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 when I found out that Lucia Nazareth was, was not somebody else, I found out it was actually Lourdes, and when I found out that she was posting about the case with Lourdes and Jamal, mm -hmm. I, I, I felt personally deceived personally deceived, personally yeah. really, really outraged. And I, I let her know that. So, um, and you know, and because I, I love Lourdes as my sister, I, I urged her to, well, apologize, but, but also I, I urged her to really like reevaluate the way that she, that she interacts with, with, with me and other people. So, I think have a, people have a right to let her know, or if I do something that you, that you think is stupid and irresponsible, you know, I have a phone number, you can call me 24 seven, and you can tell me, Richard, you're an idiot, okay? So you are free to do that. And so we wanna have that type of openness, okay. but don't, don't expect the king or, uh, or the sanctuary church as an organization to make an official proclamation about all these little things. Because mm -hmm. hopefully, as Hyunjin has said, we should be able to kind of resolve, some of this is inevitable, you know, I mean, we're all different and, and so on, but hopefully we can do what Hyunjin said this morning, which is to aim outward, okay? There's a lot of Satans out there and devils out there that we should be shooting at, not at each other, Right, but if you want to complain, call me or call you know let you know let us know. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's another part to that, which is, if some if it continues and if somebody else is found doing something similar or whatever, and you, somebody actually breaks the law, I mean, does unprincipled things, how do you fire them? How do we fire them as a move as a church as a group? How do we do that? <laughs> All of us here serve at the pleasure of the king. Uh, we were brought on for the king, by the king, and we serve at his pleasure. So uh, you complain to the king, and okay. you tell the king that you think that uh, so-and-so ought to be fired, and uh, he will make a decision. Okay. All right. I think, uh, you know, if people feel a little bit intimidated going to the king on such matters, then certainly I think uh, anybody here uh, you can approach, uh, you know, if there's some serious issue going on, we should be made aware of those. Uh, there shouldn't be anything hidden. Right. And uh, I think transparency is what we're all seeking to do. So if somebody's doing something unprincipled, you can certainly come and see me or, or anybody. But uh, if it's you? If it's me, then see Richard or Tim. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Okay. Or you can see me first and say, hey, Greg, you know, as my, as my brother, I'm really concerned about you. Mm -hmm. Like Richard said, I also approached Lourdes. I know Cook Chinam also approached Lourdes on this alias name and really came down hard on her uh, for this. So it's not like she's going, right. she's being let off easy. Actually, a lot of people have really, uh, 
I feel like in my relationship with Lourdes, I'm much more honest with her now, so I can I can speak plainly now. Whereas at the beginning, it was a little bit difficult. But you know, as you get to know somebody, you really love them and you care for them. You know how much the king loves loves a person, and you want the best for that person. So I think uh, you know, I think as we mature as a community, it's best to go face to face. And if that doesn't work, then go to somebody who knows that person well, and then maybe from that angle, that person can be reached. Yeah, that's. That's good. I'm Should I give my cell phone? Yeah, okay. That I let somebody else have I mean, I have still some more ideas about that, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, please come back for any remaining questions. Uh, who would like to go next? Robert. I do have two questions, and I'll start with the first one. Um, has anyone ever sat down or have you ever stated amongst yourselves clearly what is the fundamental purpose of the organization called Sanctuary Church? Straight out. I think I just mentioned it, that we are a free association of blessed central families, <coughs> each of whom have a ministry of their own, and the role of the church is to train people to and educate people to uh, perform those ministries. Okay, so if I understand that, Tim, and, and correct me if I'm wrong in my understanding. Oh, by the way, I'm Robert Pakel. Forgot that. Um, the purpose of Sanctuary Church is to train people to do their own ministries. To train and educate, yes. To train and educate them so they're able to do their own ministries. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I would say also, if I could add something, that we're also a house of worship where uh, the free association of blessed families can come together and worship God together. I think that's an important part of a church uh, is a house of worship. And I'm a firm believer in the kingdom of heaven. These houses of worship will continue forever and ever because it's, it's a wonderful thing to come together as brothers and sisters and praise the Lord. <laughs> So I think, uh, I think there's always going to be a place where 50, 100, 1,000 people gather together and sing songs and hear an inspirational sermon from somebody who, who has a mes message to share. I think uh, the purpose of a church is also, sanctuary church is also for that purpose, to be a, a vehicle in which the king can communicate his message. And we're all an audience of the king. I mean, to, I was thinking about that this morning. If he was speaking to an empty room, that would, be, that would be a different spirit, you know, but the fact that you come here to support the king, some of you driving two hours each time to come to attend the king is a beautiful thing, and I think it's because of that heart of attendance that the Holy Spirit comes down. If the king was here alone, how tragic that would be. So I'm really personally very grateful for everybody who makes the effort to come here and to really just offer themselves up, and to me, that's also the purpose of the Sanctuary Church in Newfoundland. Okay, um, staying on that first question, what I'm hearing is I'm hearing different perspectives of what the purpose of Sanctuary Church is. No, I don't think what he said is in any way contradictory of what it might, it just adds. I didn't say it was in contradiction, I said it's a different perspective. Okay. Okay. In other words, if you look at something from different angles, you see different things. Okay, and that's exactly how I meant it. Um, just as a suggestion, I think it would be good to formulate a clear statement of purpose at some point to publish, you know, and how people, you know, can, not saying it locks you in or defines you, but it's just something because that's been a bit nebulous when people have asked me, what is the purpose of Sanctuary Church, mm -hmm. you know, personally? Um, the other thing is, on that question, the follow-up part is, okay, given the purposes that were stated, how does Sanctuary Church, the leadership, see they're going to accomplish that practically? In other words, you have a purpose or a vision. How do you accomplish that practically? What, how do you operate to do that? Can I begin? Um, use the word leadership, and I don't know if we're leadership. Um, we were brought on as the king's staff uh, to help the king. Uh, so I'm not sure um, what is meant by, by leadership. I think uh, 
each uh, Blessed Central family uh, here is a leader in their own ministry. Uh, and so we are kind of a, a gathering of leaders in that sense. Um, and, but, but, but getting beyond that word, how uh, I think that uh, the perspective that I introduced can be accomplished, I think it's being accomplished now um, by the king uh, through his uh, uh, sermons and his, uh, the education that he gives us uh, through his, um, through his uh, uh, king's report and sermons and all the, the uh, uh, sermons that he gives. Uh, I've been given, I know I've been given a completely new perspective on the New Testament uh, in terms of the uh, kingdom gospel. Uh, this has really been an eye-opener for me, and I'm sure uh, many other people uh, share that uh, experience. Uh, and the, uh, I think uh, the, uh, um, also another way in which this is being accomplished is that there is now a, 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 an atmosphere or a place where people are free to think in terms of creating their own ministries. Um, that was not true before. Uh, you, were, you, you were assigned a ministry, but now um, you, you pray, you, you take your remas, and, and uh, uh, you think about it, you talk about it uh, in your family, and uh, uh, you try to come up with a, a way, uh, a ministry that, that you can perform, that each family can perform, uh, that will contribute to the, uh, to the coming of the kingdom. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe leadership was the wrong word, but staff means you facilitate the desire. So in that sense, I meant the question. Thank you. I think HSU is another good example of what's developed. Not that we necessarily had very much to do with that. That was really Carrie and mm -hmm. the Queen, I think, really developing uh, that online curriculum that, you know, and that's another good example of, uh, you know, of leadership development, I would say. Okay. And the final point on that is given the staff to facilitate then from my perspective, the staff should open doors and not uh, shut down people's participation or dictate people's participation in various avenues or things. A am I understanding that correctly? Agreed, yes. Okay. And in that sense, I honestly have to say that I have personally experienced with the staff being shut out. Specifically, anything to do with uh, the DP or anything like that for various you know, deals. I won't go into the details. I'm not here to bring that up. But I just want to make that point. And it's a point that others have made to me is when they come to the staff, particular people in the staff, they feel that they are shut down, pushed out, or rejected. And that's a reality. And I'm just bringing it up. I'm not here to debate it. I'm not here to dig into the details. But it has an effect on people. Actually, I'd like to respond. Um, this is an area where uh, about, let me see, I guess two months ago, I, 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 I saw the need to restructure the, our educational development efforts for the United States, you know, the English-speaking world, I guess. So we, there have been some changes, and I, I, I spoke with Hyun Jin Im about appointing Kerry Williams to, be, to coordinate our education development uh, efforts because I, I really wanted to develop, uh, you know, we're claiming that we're offering OSDP education, but I, I felt like we had not begun to really, really have give and take with the content from Reverend Yu, and so I, I, don't like, I don't like advertising something that is not true. To me, that damages trust. So, and I, I have to say that Working with Carrie, I, she is an incredibly serious sister. She is, I mean, I, some of you already know this, but she is relentless in like really going to the original Korean and, 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 and having, uh, you know, Andy Lausberg, I think some of you know Andy. 
he'll, he'll write like a whole page about one sentence, about how to translate one <laughs> sentence. That is so, that's how kind of careful he is. And we are going through the entire set of revenues, uh, 500 slides, to make sure that the, the English translation reflects what the Korean says. And then th there are even some questions that we have regarding some of, some of the, the, the content of the slides and how they're organized. So we are really digging into this. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's taking a little while. I, I apologize for that because I wish we had it done, you know, yesterday or, or last year. But I, I believe that we made a very good choice and, and then we have other people who are helping and so I'm hoping that in, in the near future you're, you're going to see some, several new presentations. Um, I apologize that we promised you the English OSDP manual uh, last July when Revenue actually gave, gave that's what we said to, said to those of you who attended and we lied to you. We, we did not keep our promise, and to me, that really, I, that I don't want that to happen again. To me, I don't, I don't like promising something and then breaking my promise that I don't want to be like that kind of person. So I, I apologize to each one of you who came to that OSDP seminar, and you were led to believe that you would have the, the manual, and we, we did not keep our promise to you. And so we're not going to do that again. And whatever we say, we're going to mean what we say. So I, I and, and, and Carrie, Carrie Williams is, is a really wonderful person to lead this. So is there a role for Robert in that effort? I, I can talk to Carrie about that, yes. Okay. I can talk, yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, thank you. Um, well, we'll save the other one for maybe later if someone else. Okay. Has yeah, I was going to say, if, uh, is, is there anybody? That uh, has a uh, another question for your own question. Yep, Lewis, please. Post. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lewis Perlman. Um, I am responsible for the Philadelphia area by extension, the state of Pennsylvania. But I don't really need to do the whole state of Pennsylvania. And also, I've been transcribing the sermons, Sunday sermons for the pastor for the past year and a half. Um, this question is, I look at the panel, so it's more directed for Lourdes than the rest of you. A lot of the people here or across the, the global ministry are split between their families right now, where one spouse is directed toward being here in the Sanctuary Church, and another one is not, still in the Family Federation. So I've been blessed that my wife has made that move recently, not 100%, but I think it needs to be, I, I like to get opinions about that, and at least one of you should be Lourdes, since she has that unique perspective on the stage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a... Um, been witnessing for a while now, for two years, and uh, my main witnessing person is my husband. So I've been trying, you know, it's, it's been very hard to, um, to see that Family Federation has grabbed a hold of some brothers and sisters, especially my husband, They're right in his neck, you know, and it's very hard to pull him out. So um, what I can say, you know, my husband is, a very sincere person with great faith in our true father. And in my case, we feel that both of us love true father so much. And on that, we're totally united. So the other things, unfortunately, it's minor detail for us. And we will work this out. I'm determined. I pledged that to my heavenly father many times. So in my case, also, I feel like I'm not sure about every one situation, but my husband, uh, has paid for me to go to Korea, I think maybe five or seven times, two 40 days workshop, 21 day uh, Father Seonghwa ceremony. My husband was working full time to be able to afford to give me the money to go. You know, I went to Las Vegas many times. 
I was there with Father many times, and I actually failed in teaching him the content that would now be so helpful to him. So I feel extremely sad in my heart because, um, yeah, you know, all the things you were doing seems to be um, keeping myself very busy. But inside of me, that is my priority to, um, you know, to really help my family, help my husband. So that's, uh, that's all I can say about that. Thank you. In addressing that issue of a family being divided, um, in our situation, my older daughter is married to the son of Angelica Selly, and she's in charge of the Women's Federation for World Peace. And prior to um, the events of father's passing, uh, we were able to talk about certain things. And uh, now she's being, you know, suddenly she got a huge salary boost as soon as, it be, as soon as it became evident and open that um, we're involved with sanctuary. So I'm not going to question the family fit's motivation for that, but when we do gather as a family, we try to keep it only about family, only about uh, grandchildren or children, and keep the perspective as broad and general as possible because you know you're not going to win on either case. So we, we go by the blood bonds and let it go at that because if you go any further, you're just going to make further divisions. So, you know, when it becomes about family and if something were to happen to them, of course, we'd be there for them. But it is tragic that you have these situations where we know they're being deceived, we know they're being manipulated, and you can't say a thing about it. Actually, I, I want to make one more comment just quickly about this issue. I. I feel very strongly that we should not have a two-class system within the sanctuary community. I, some people say, oh, if you're a, you're a blessed couple under True Father's authority who, who are wearing crowns, you're citizens. But if you're not in that situation and your spouse is not part of sanctuary, then you're not a citizen. I, I totally reject that that's a divisionist the theology. Okay, all of us came from the satanic world, and by, by God's grace, we are engrafted into Christ's lineage. Okay, we're all in that same boat. Okay, so, and if you are in position of king and queen, then instead of being arrogant and boasting about that, why don't you help your brother and sister and help witness to the spouse and help, help the, uh, the uh, brother or sister who is struggling to... to to educate their spouse instead of being arrogant and boastful. And, and, and to me, it is totally wrong to have that attitude. And I, I really hate that attitude. I have to say that. I'd like to um, respond a little bit to, although in my case, uh, my wife and I are both in sanctuary. I have uh, dealt with this issue um, when some people have come to me asking me the same question, so I've prayed about it and trying to helping those help those people. And I think the answers that I've come up with so far is that uh, first of all, the person who is uh, connected to the to Father and through the three kingships has to maintain that faith. That's the first thing. Uh, that person is, uh, whether it's the husband or the wife, that person is in the able position. And you could even say that person, in terms of the faith, is in the subject partner position, even if it is the wife. And then, and, and this, by the way, um, although that's not your case, Lewis, but I find more sisters have this problem than, than brothers. Um, that's been my experience. In other words, the, the wife is here, the husband is not. I found that to be more common in my experience. Or at least maybe it's just the wives that are coming to me, I don't know. But... Uh, uh, Maintaining the uh, uh, unity and proper relationship between the spouses is the next thing that's important. Um, when we receive the blessing, we become one in both God's eyes 
and in Satan's eyes. These are not Father's words, these are my words, all right? So <laughs> that's just my way of understanding it. Satan knows that he can attack either one by attacking the other. So I've often found that when I'm going through something, my wife is going through the same thing or something similar. It, it's amazing how that works. You know? uh, so uh, if, 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 if the wife or the, or the one who is connected to the three kingships maintains that connection, then the husband or the other spouse uh, will also receive a, a benefit, shall we say, uh, from that. God's guidance, I think, that's, that's what I meant. God's grace and God's guidance. Yeah. Eventually, you know, uh, we, uh, it's, it's God that's going to change that person. Amen. And our role is to create the condition or the channel, or the foundation through which God can work. Lisa's got her hand up. Go ahead. Yeah. Go right ahead. It was a question. Um, actually, just want to follow oh, introduce up yourself oh. first, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, Lisa? <laughs> I'm Lisa Ellenson, wife of the mighty Lowell Ellenson. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making that clear. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, babe. Okay. Um, <laughs> Y'all stop now. Sweet serious. Um, yeah, just to follow up with Tim, I know we have a lot of internal struggles that we're going through, but in terms of understanding that it's actually God who's going to change everybody, that's what I hold my hope out for because he's never failed in that way. So my question that I have is, I guess directed more for Richard and uh, anyone else who would know, is we recently had you all going to Europe to debate um, the family fed and their minions. And there was going to be a follow-up uh, program that was going to include, uh, I think in Switzerland, um, that was the well, idea anyway. But I was wondering what the progress of that was, you know, on the macro level, that if we're going to shoot outwardly, we need to, we want to take care of the Antichrist first, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, that's so, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so just so you know, the, um, the, uh, the collegiate group in Antwerp, Belgium, they are going to publish the journal of all the papers given at the conference. Uh, we uh, recently sent a donation of about $1,200, I believe, to help with the publication of the journal. So I, I expect to find out soon when that, when that will be published. The journal will be sent out to about 500 different seminaries, universities, and uh, schools of religion in Europe, Africa, North America, and Asia, and uh, anywhere, any, I don't know if I left any continent out, but it's going to be sent out very widely, which to me is a very good thing. The, the, we, we, we have a chance, at least in the papers that Carrie Williams and I, and I gave, to, they can understand what the perspective is of the second king of Channel Cook and, and what, why he felt the need to, to start his ministry here in, in Pennsylvania. Then as far as another conference goes, um, th there was an offer from Dr. Eileen Barker to host a conference in London um, upon a uh, conversation with the representatives from UTS and Family Federation, I think they had no interest in being in a conference together with us because we, we punched their nose and bloodied their nose. <laughs> so the, I don't think that there wasn't a lot of interest from their side. Uh, so, and then actually, Hyunjin actually felt it would be more valuable to have a conference on the peace police, peace militia, uh, and that, that would take place. Uh, and initially, they're talking about La Lausanne, Switzerland, I believe. In Lausanne, Gen yes. Originally, it was a. Um, we were thinking of Geneva, but uh, yeah. the way the logistics yeah. working out, it's a, maybe this is a good time for us to uh, tell people about that. Because I recently got an email from someone in Europe saying, "How come Lourdes is planning a, a, a conference in, in Switzerland? Lourdes is not planning this conference, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Lourdes does not. She does a lot, but she does not, does not do everything." Um, 
There is a, yes, uh, this is the, the king's um, request that, um, uh, and so Christian Sieberger, the continental leader in Europe, uh, has uh, uh, teamed up with uh, two other uh, national leaders uh, in Europe uh, to uh, plan and execute a, a conference in Lausanne, uh, Switzerland, on the uh, peace militia, peace military. Uh, the idea being that, you know, because the uh, peace, the Swiss uh, military model is a kind of a, is, is one that we often refer to in terms of uh, the peace, police, uh, police militia, that is why uh, that's being done. Uh, and I think that January 20th, as I recall, is the date that they are planning to do that, yeah. This is done by the King's request, but it's being done uh, by Europeans in Europe. Uh, I guess the follow-up. And they're also raising the funds for it. Oh, okay. The follow-up question I would like to, if there was a suggestion along those lines, if it's going to be the peace, police, peace militia, if we could, um, because this is an interest and it's close to my heart, is... Um, years ago, we went to Los Angeles, I mean, uh, Las Vegas, and I did a talk in front of the Women's Federation Assembly about, and the, the topic there was uh, sexual trafficking of, of women. And if there is some way we could address more or align more with people who are fighting against pedophiles, sex trafficking, in, in a real way, like including law enforcement, military, people like that. Just you, a thought. You, and, you and Lowell. I would do it in a heartbeat. Well, there you go. You and Lowell, that's your ministry. Before we leave that topic, I'd like to just make a little comment. If you're not familiar with the organization called CESNR, that's the, that's the organization that sponsored the conference that they attended. And this is the, I think it is, a, is about the highest premier organization on new religions. They've been around for a long time, a long time, and they are the authority. The, many academic, uh, all around the world, they're, they're viewed as having the, most accurate understanding of new religions. So that's, it's a big deal. Um, do we have another question? If we move along, Gideon, I see your hand is up. And as he makes his way to the mic, come on everybody, dig into those uh, brain cells, turn on those brain cells. I know probably everybody's got a question that, and no question is too small. Let's hear from as many as we can. Thank you, Gideon. Hey everyone, my name is Gideon Rauchi. I am a public official, like everyone else here in uh, Sanctuary Church. And uh, what? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't have question. much responsibility as much as uh, these guys do. <laughs> do What's your question? Lot. But uh, yep, um, this is a question that I already know the answer to but I think it's really good for us to get to know each other, just like what Richard said earlier, for us to get to know each other, right? You said that earlier. And uh, yeah, so it's an answer that, that I do already know, and I think maybe, hopefully this could be a process that we could get to learn. Anyway. What's the question? Yes, I got you, okay. <laughs> then we'll ask so, you for the answer. <laughs> got you, all right, all right. So I'd like to ask each one of you, are we sovereign citizens of Channel Cook? Yes! <laughs> they had no idea I was going to ask this. I, I, I didn't tell anyone what I was going to ask. My answer is I don't know. Next. I don't know. Okay, I, I'd like to answer a little bit uh, more than... <laughs> that's like a two-word <laughs> answer. <laughs> okay. Okay, the... You're asking if we are sovereign citizens of Chunalguk. Right. Okay. Right. So then, okay, there are different ways to think about this, about this question. Okay, so what is Chunalguk? And then if you refer to the Constitution uh, of the United States of Chunalguk, that's actually a constitution for a real nation. Okay, so are we citizens of a real nation that has been established? The answer is no. Okay, on the other hand, are we, are we citizens of, in, in a spiritual sense, of God's kingdom, then you could say we, we've been accepted into the Messiah's lineage, uh, and we are, uh, we've been appointed as, the second king of Channel Gook has, has appointed us as kings and queens, 
Okay. So now, I, I don't think that anybody is actually ruling a. I mean, it's Kyle Toffee might be ruling a kingdom because he actually has he actually has land and sovereignty over I think six locations. <laughs> but you know, most of us, um, I, I guess, I am exercising sovereignty, real sovereignty over a one acre piece of land in Milford, Pennsylvania, where my family lives. So I think I'm. I, I have sovereignty over that. That property, although I am, I am still subject to the laws of Milford, uh, the township of Milford and the count, Pikes County. So, you know, when you ask that question, it, it sounds like a very simple question, but I, I would say in a spiritual sense, we've certainly all been accepted and appointed as kings and queens of Channel Gook. Okay. And I think, I, I will say this. I believe that all of us are in training to be sovereign citizens of a real nation. And let me, I, I'm going to be a little bit blunt in my answer here for a second. Okay. We could actually have a real nation of Channel Gook that follows the Constitution of the United States Channel Gook that, that Hyunjinim gave, gave to us. And it could actually be a kingdom of hell. Okay, and let me tell you why I am saying that. Because a nation is, there's the structure of a nation, and then there's the character, the character of the citizens of, of, of a nation. Okay, you could have the perfect system, the, the best system, I mean, the, the Chanukah Constitution, if you look at it, the whole Constitution is designed to limit power to limit the central federal power, to limit the power of banks, and, and it, it's ingenious in its intent to l limit the possibility of what Hyunjin calls political Satanism. However, if you have people who are not serious about their relationship with God, who cheat on, cheat on their spouses, who are dishonest in their relationships, and who are accusing of everyone around them, I would not want to live in that, in that nation, and I will, not, I will not be part of that nation. Okay, so I mean, I, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, I'm a citizen of, of Channel Gook, and, 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 they, and the, the spirit that they are saying this to me is, my honest feeling is that they are not expressing gratitude to Christ because any type of position that we have is because of Christ. It's not because you're so great or I'm so great that we, you know, we deserve something and, you know, we've got all these rights and you, you, you know, to me, there's like a accusing spirit that I want to have nothing to do with, okay? So, the, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We're in training. We're in training. And, and the Bible and Father's words and Hyunjin's words are the training materials so that we can actually be good citizens of the nation of Channel Gook. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, when I, when I hear that question, I say yes, because spiritually, legally, no. Spiritually, yes, uh, I think we are developing a mindset of what it means to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And uh, that, you know, we're all, we all come from uh, being uh, in bondage to the satanic thinking and the satanic world. We all have been slaves. So what's it going to take to liberate ourselves and one day create this nation is going to first, the prerequisite of that is a free mindset, a, a relationship with God that sees ourselves as citizens of the kingdom. So I would say uh, a, a resounding, resounding yes, I am a king of the kingdom of heaven. I am a king of Chung Il Guk. Now, yeah, I don't have the ability to enforce any of that, but in my mind, I want to be free. In my heart, I want to be free. So I, I would say uh, first and foremost, yes, and then, of course, logistically, no. If, if I could just follow up with a question. I think, is this um, going to be another question, or is it a, a, it, it, a part of the first? Up. Yeah, it'll, it'll come. It's connected. Okay. Um, so this is still your first that, question. Uh, I know. I know. With the 
whole legalistic and yeah, that's I, I was happy to hear the the spiritual. That was that's something I, I could very much connect with. And I, I definitely understand what you're saying, Doctor Panzer. It's a lot of freedom. If people misuse it, then yeah, they're creating their own hell. I totally understand that. That's where the whole freedom responsibility comes in. And I guess that's your free association, right? You don't want to associate with the kind of you know people like that. Mm -hmm. um, so to 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 recognize that we're sovereign citizens, even though we don't have land or we don't have dirt, you could say, can is this constitution still active? Again, for me, I, I already have in my mind what the answer is, but I think it's it's good for us to get to know what what you know know each other. Is the constitution still active even though uh, or maybe active in a certain level? Uh, Can I well, in, in a way that? of defending, in a way of, of pe like uh, people's rights are still defended, um, and not not uh, uh, being violated, you could say. Um, the Constitution of the United States of Chenango, uh is uh, d is designed and put forward for, as the first paragraph of the preamble says, uh, a future nation. Uh, and uh, it gives, a, if you read it and study it, I think you'll see that it gives a process by which the United States of Chernobyl can be established uh, from now. And I'm actually thinking that maybe I need to make a YouTube video on this. Um, but uh, just to Channel. give a kind of um, um, a brief uh, introduction, if you look at the title, the United States of Chernobyl, states is in the plural, and I think that should give a hint. And also, if you look at uh, the way that the Senate is, is composed, it says that senators are appointed by the, uh, by the upper house or by the, by the legislature, by the legislature of the several states. So you have, to, so the United States of China, uh, just as, you know, when, when the United States of America was formed, uh, there were 13 colonies that existed before the United States of America existed. And these 13 colonies each had their own uh, constitution. And they uh, came together and created a constitution for, um, uh, for, for a federal uh, constitution. Now, we're kind, of this, we're kind of doing it backwards. We're kind of getting the cart before the horse. We have that federal constitution before we have uh, those uh, states and before each state has its own constitution. But the, the, con but the federal constitution presupposes the existence of those states, I think, like I said, it's the United States of China. So it would seem that you would have to have two separate and independent uh, states that already have some kind of a governing document by which they can have a Senate or, or, or a legislature, because you can't have a legislature without a, without a governing document, such as a constitution. So today in the United States, uh, each of the 50 states has their own constitution. Pennsylvania has a constitution. Delaware has a, has a constitution. Texas has a constitution. These are not the same as the United States Constitution, but they are consistent with the United States Constitution. Uh, so they are not in, in violation of the United States Constitution, because if they were, uh, the United States Supreme Court would tell them to change it, uh, to make it fall in line with it. But they're not the same, and they don't have to be the same. Uh, it would be weird if they were the same. So uh, anyway, so for for so if you ask, you know, do we need do we need land? Uh, yeah, I think we need land. You know, when the when God uh, was uh, uh, leading the Israelites, He wanted them to occupy a certain land. My my phrase, lines on a map. God wanted certain lines on a map. <laughs> a line on the map, and I want you in that land. And personally, I think the reason it took them. 40 years to get there is because probably on the way they were thinking, ah, we don't have to go all that way. I mean, you know, we have the Ten Commandments, you know, uh, we have a relationship with God, we can, we can just uh, uh, create our, 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 our nation here. Right? We're already citizens of the Canaan, right? of Canaan, right? We have to, why do we have to go all the way? What's all so, so great about milk and honey? But God, no, God wanted them to go to that lines on the map. So I prepared this, this line on the map and I want you to be inside it. Uh, so, and I think also we need what I call lines on a map. I think we need. I think we need land, and I don't know how that's going to happen. All right, right, right. Uh, but I see God's providence moving in certain ways. When I see what's happening in Catalonia, when I see what's happening, you know, uh, uh, in, in California, you know, 
I sort of get hope <laughs> that, that things are, uh, it would have been best, you know, if this could have happened, you know, if the Han mother had not uh, uh, done what she did, it would have been best if, uh, you know, uh, maybe Korea, Japan uh, could have adopted this and, and, and or the United States could have adopted this and these three countries could have just become the United States of China, maybe something like that. But that's not the direction that we see that we're, that we're going. And maybe during this time of judgment, maybe things will. But somehow, it's, it's, I believe, I believe as a matter of faith that this is going to manifest itself somehow. But right now, as, a, as someone said, yeah, we're in training. We're in training for the, the culture and the civilization that will make Chanyukuk work. Um, and, and obviously, you know, the, the rights that are spelled out in the Chanyukuk Constitution, we have to be cognizant of those rights uh, and so forth. Uh, uh, so we, we need to read the Constitution, study the Constitution, and, and um, um, become people who are, um, who are able to live uh, in that kind of a kingdom and, and manage it as, our, as the owners of that kingdom. Because ownership consciousness is going to be a big part of making that kingdom successful. And right now, we've been trained not to have that ownership consciousness. Uh, and, and taking part in elections is perhaps the beginning, maybe becoming involved in the local politics, uh, but also uh, having ownership consciousness uh, in, 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 our, uh, in our sanctuary community is, is another way that we can be trained uh, towards, uh, towards that kind of a culture. So the Constitution, in, in some level, would you say is still active in the case of citizens of Chalukuk were, were violated, even if we don't have lines on a map? I, I don't. I, think, I totally understand. I, I, don't, totally agree I, with the I don't think the Constitution can be said to be active uh, currently. It's it's on a shelf, all right, to be taken down uh, when we are ready to use it. But we know what's in it, and we are making ourselves or training ourselves, uh, training our community to become people who can who are worthy of this Constitution. But I think if the, if the yes or no question, if the, is the Constitution active, uh, my answer is no. So, so if, if citizens of Chalunga get violated, then there, would there still be justice or no justice? Yes, there is. There can be and there should be. Uh, there should be justice in all cases. Uh, and I think um, uh, we need, um, personally, I would like to see a governing document of this, uh, of this community. All right, thank you. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, I would just yeah. respond that, you know, the, the, our king, uh, Hyunjinim, he actually allowed in the case of Lord, you know, Jamal felt he had a grievance. Hyunjin did not have to appoint uh, a judge to, to, and have a, a case. He didn't have to do that. And to me, he was using this this situation uh, to set a precedent for the future so that, you know, brothers and sisters know that they have a right if they, if they feel they've not had redress of their grievances, that there's a way for people to, you know, to have their grievances uh, dealt with. And I thought it was sad that we, we didn't actually go through with the court case because I think, you know, that would have been good education for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, Kristen. Oh, I guess you weren't in here before we started, but yeah, introduce yourself so that. I'm Kristen Quinn. Hi, and I'm from Missouri. <clears throat> Show me state. Yes. <laughs> Qu Queen, Queen Kristen. My motto. Okay. Um, I sent in 14 questions and thought of a few more afterwards. Um, however, I think I'm going to just encapsulate them all. Um, so bear with me here. <laughs> and they're about the topic that Gideon brought up, mostly. <clears throat> and I just talked with the king and his brother about these kind of things. And um, OK, the Constitution is a gift from God. It's a gift from our king. It's the word of God for the kingdom of heaven on earth which Father has given us as a mission since the beginning of our, you know, inception in this path. So I'm very connected to this because this is our ultimate goal, the kingdom of heaven on earth. We've had debates, some of the people in this, like Tim particularly, I think, 
about the viability of the Constitution and when is it going to be instituted and how is it going to be instituted. And I think this is a crucial, crucial issue for our community. We have some different, I think, confusion or dual purposes or mixed purposes going on in the structure that exists right now. We have the church structure here in SC, Pennsylvania. I don't connect to that. I'm in Missouri. I have my own structure. Other people have their own structures. I think it's really different. For the people here who have a king versus people like me and all over the world who don't have the king, who don't have access to the king. Therefore, for people like me, it becomes much more imperative to focus on what is the structure that we connect to the king through. Because from far away, it seems like there's no access. It's very much, if you live somewhere else, it's very much like dealing with family fed. I'm encapsulating my questions, my 14 questions. And I'm also having a dialogue about what concerns me. Okay. <clears throat> huh, so, um, I appreciate so much your answer to are we citizens of Chungogu because you talked about it's a mentality, it's a spiritual safe sanctuary place that you either are in or you're not in. The crown means something to you, personally, or it doesn't. And you consider yourself citizens of Chungogook, and that's a very real thing to you, or it is not. I talked with the king and his brother, and told him that there is a need, and he understands, there is a need for a different structure than sanctuary church. There is a need for a manifestation of an umbrella organization that uh, the king is over all churches. The king is over all organizations. That's our constitution. That's needed right now in Missouri, an ability to not have to um, manipulate a structure through people like we don't know with issues we don't have to connect. And so God has given us that structure, the constitution for that to happen. And we have to have the mentality to create it. So there's, it's a balanced constitution. It's the IG, the, it's the, the king. IG? It's the inspector, inspector yeah. general. It's the king. And it's the citizens. The other reason it's crucial is because the micro informs the macro. What happens around the king providentially happens in the macro. So when we're talking about nuclear war, when we're talking about pedophiles, when we're talking about defeating Satan on the macro, we should look first to the micro. Are we taking care to live according to God's ideals and God's values? as owners of Chungulguk, as citizens. The citizen part, the king can't do. The citizen part, the IG can't do. The citizen part is the part we do. There are, I am going to introduce this, the king said I can. The citizen part mm -hmm. is our job to take responsibility for. And so Kukchen and Hyunjin's knows that citizens have gotten together and we have a citizen covenant for those of us who believe we are citizens of Chungulguk and we are going to make it manifest. Okay, so Kristen, let me just, um, uh, I think you're proposing and you're, you are actually answering, asking a question. So you're, you're saying, th there's actually two, there's actually a lot of questions in your statement, but as I understand it, uh, you're saying, if I understand correctly, that uh, you who live in Missouri or other parts of, of America 
um, it's hard for you to relate directly to the king because you're not here, and that you, so you're wondering how you can relate to the king. Um, I, I would say that Hyunjin has already given many organizations um, all over the world. He said to, uh, in Korea, there's the Sanctuary Church of, of Korea, and then there's the Utopia Moon group. And Hyunjin says to both of them, go for it. You know, let's have some heavily competition. So, well, Hyunjin said to me today that citizens can uh, register uh -huh. and declare their citizenship. Okay. Okay, then and you got your answer then. Yeah, and so yeah, so the answer is you you are free, you, uh, Kristen, you are free right now and you are always free to organize anything you want and you are free to, you know, form some type of association uh, as you, as you're putting it. You have that freedom right now and you always did. And, and if you can persuade people to, to work with you in this uh, new association, then Hyunjinim is not stopping you. I'm not stopping you. Lourdes, Tim, and, and, and Greg, we're, none of us are stopping you from doing anything, anything that you want in this area. And Gideon is going to be uh, in charge. He's got these forms. Uh -huh. And people can register with Gideon if they want to claim a okay. covenant as a citizen that will be formed to a Congress I'd like to in, a different, in a different uh, level than this church structure. Okay? I'd like to answer it's some of the Christian, uh, Christian's uh, questions here because uh, she's not asking a question now, but she did submit 14 questions. I have them in front of me. Okay. And uh, I'd like to answer some of them since she's not going to give us an opportunity to answer them on her own. Um, her first question is, how do you justify your Supreme Council governing structure? And uh, I'd like to answer that. Um, we're not a Supreme Council. Uh, maybe you were not here when we, when we uh, first uh, began this meeting, but uh, I described how uh, when uh, uh, the king began his ministry, he had no staff, and he brought me on as his first member of the staff. The work alert got too big for me, so we Excuse brought on me, Greg. Excuse me, Tim, but I'm not let me, interested. Let me finish. I'm not interested in that question. Well, I'm interested in answering it because you asked the question right here, so I'm interested in answering so let me answer it. If you're not interested in asking the question, why'd you ask it? Um, well, why'd you ask it? Because um, the church structure that you're involved in, I really have no longer any interest in. I don't really care. Because oh, yep. what I care about is the Constitution and a constitutional okay, right. structure okay. that the so, king... I'm sorry, do you have the, a question? The, the do you have king, a question? I'm telling you. Okay, look, look. Let, Are you let, asking let, or telling? Uh, wait, okay, wait. Okay, everybody. I'm telling. Then I'm you telling don't belong you. here. Then you don't belong here. This no, is I belong here because my king told this is, me. This is a meeting I, for us to ask questions and for, for you to ask okay. questions and for us to answer. Okay, actually, I. I if I the just, king told you, then you're okay. finished. You got your answer. Okay, listen, everybody. You've got a long ways to drive. Kristen has an association. She wants you to consider joining with her. And after this meeting's over, Please talk to Kristen if you're interested, and we, we're not trying to stop you, Kristen. We, we want to let other people ask a question now as well. There are other people who want to ask a question. So, but everybody, please talk to Kristen if, if you're interested in what no, she has to say. No, talk to Gideon, not me. I'm not okay, going to be well, here. Okay, well, I think Gideon, Gideon will, wh whoever, whoever, whoever you want. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay my name is Luz Franco. Um, I'm a Christian. Uh, the day my son one comes, I want to be First, first of all, I'm going to try to, like uh, everybody say, women, we are so emotional, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be not so emotional. Um, when I was in the family field, always I was calling the outsider because I was a Pentecostal. Then I became a seven-day event for 21 years. I called the outsider, and I love it. And some members here also call me like that. It's not offending because I'm Christian, and Jesus is my savior. Father is the first who loved Christian, uh, Christ that decided to take his mission. And that's why they call me outsider. I prefer to be outside of the matrix. Um, I had two questions. First of all, when uh, I think that was uh, Greg, they say that spiritually we are um, citizens of Chan and Gook. 
I don't know, I'm very confused and forgive me, but uh, I found that so hypocrite. Uh, at least Tim Alder was honest and he said, I don't know. But as a Christian, I can tell you, I'm a, I'm a princess of the king. All the Christians always, we know that when we go to the spirit world, when we go to heaven, we had a crown. Some on you, shame on you, I cannot breathe. I cannot wear my crown because I don't have a king. How many times you can say, wear your crowns? Shame on you. Shame on you, your bunch of hypocrites. I'm a citizen of Channing Cook, okay? You know me, Greg, and some of you know me for many years. I've died for I, what I believe, okay? Some brothers here, you say you follow the king. Three weeks ago, I sit down right there. My pastor, because I call him my pastor, because Jesus is the first pastor. And I told him I'm ready to walk away from this church because I don't feel God anymore. After you give you the sermon, I go to the kitchen, and you know, Greg, that's the only place that I can find peace in my mind. The pastor told me, Luz, we're going to buy a land. And we're going to help the second Jane, who has been just married in the last month, to build the houses. Help me. And I'm going to help my king. I don't give a shit. Here, believe or not, and in, that you are a citizen or no, you don't believe in the, in the, we had a country. We had a country. We had to build a country, people. <laughs> if you don't want to help, it's okay. You want to start fighting here to be church or no church. That you go. Okay? If you want to stay here fighting who is why and who's wrong, go ahead. I promise to my king. And he is there over there. He knows, and God is my witness, that I said, stay and I'm going to help you. Because look at that man over there. That's my son, my son. And when I have my son, I offer to God and say, God, use him. He has been faithful, so he's going to continue the seed and make the prophecies. And then I hope all the second gene here who have been married, please help the king. It's, we are, I am a citizen of Channing Cook. I signed that paper, and I'm proud. And somebody here is going to say, get out from the church. Go ahead and push me. Take me out. Because I came here to die for my Jesus Christ. I'm going to confess to you. Five years ago, when I found my husband cheating on me, I tried to take my life, and that's a sin. So I'm not afraid to die, my brothers, for my Christ. Who is my king or king? My life. So I'm going to support the king because of that. You guys can do whatever. Harry Town meetings, do whatever. And the second thing coming is about Lourdes. Many people don't know. I have issues with her for how long Lourdes? 12 years. I love her. Don't take me wrong. And you tell me, Lourdes, how many times when we had events and you are so okay, I come and I say how I can help you. Yeah. And I'm proud that you repent. I mean, you ask, uh, apologize to Jamal and about the page and all that. But you denied to me in my face that you didn't call me whore, sister. We talk in that room and I raise my hand and I say, God, in my witness. I approached Tim Alder. I approached Jerry, that he's not here. The first person I complained that was Yonani. And the last person that was the key. That day that I said I get ready to go. And you deny my face. And sister, I love you. But I take that to my grave and to God. That you say that to me that day in the kitchen. And I forgive you, you know why? Because I want to see my king. Okay, but you need to really be honest and you repent and don't do anymore. That's what Jesus said to the woman that washed his feet. I love everybody, but it's time to do something else. We need to really to start the nation. It's not for future generations. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to seven day Adventists. When we say someday when Jesus comes, we're going to have the kingdom of God on honor. No. The kingdom, he won is starting now in Father too. Don't let Father die for nothing. That's it.
Thank you, Louis. I just want to say one more thing. I feel really sad that I don't have a voice unless I can ask you a question. Well, the but purpose I don't of this have meeting. Value unless I th I'd like to raise a point of order with the MC. I believe she's I out of order. She should ask a question. Okay. Yeah, if you have a question, please ask your question. And there's, there's ample time, even if it's through telephone conversation, there's ample time for, for uh, further communication. This is to be a question and answer, sir. I have uh, a question where, for Tim Elder. Okay. Why do you think you have authority to censor citizens of Chungalbuk. I don't have that authority. You have the authority in this meeting. I have the authority to raise a point of order. I have the no. right to raise, I don't have the authority, I have a right to raise a point of order because this meeting was uh, called uh, for people to ask questions to the staff and you're taking up time with your own announcements and your own opinions and you're not asking a question. You're not contributing to the purpose of this meeting. You're out of order. Okay, thank you, Tim, for, for bringing clarity. And for everyone else, as we continue on, let's, let's return to the spirit of this meeting. It should be a positive spirit. I know there's been personal issues. Can I make a comment? I ask your permission to make a comment along this line. Okay, I know that people have interpersonal issues. And I think it's wrong if we think that we need to escalate our interpersonal issues with other people to the level of a constitutional violation. If my wife and I have an argument, I'm not gonna invoke the Constitution, okay? If you have an argument with a brother and sister, please deal with that. That's what Hyung Jinam has been saying. Please resolve this between yourselves by your conscience. We can't just give up our own responsibility and throw it on the shoulders of the church and on the Constitution and even on to God. We're we trying to say, God, your Constitution's not so great because I'm not up at this person. So I've felt this way for a long time. And please, let's reflect. We're here before God, before our Lord Jesus. We've invoked the name of Jesus. We're here also before the saints and sages shed their blood in the providence. We're now participating in that same providence. It's not separate from those that are watching us from the spirit world right now. And let's honor them. Okay, and so let's continue on with our questions. We Go ahead, Lourdes. I just wanna say a few <coughs> words about uh, the incident that Lewis has brought it up. Um, I wish she was here, I would like to. She's over right now. She, oh, hi, Lewis. Oh. I want to ask the MC, is this really in order? I know Lou's made his comment. But I, I, I made those statements hoping to bring back into focus the spirit of asking questions. To, and these, these are people that carry a very heavy responsibility in their, in their performing their duties under, under Hyung Jim's order and under God's direction of the providence. Us are perfect, but let's uh, let's try to confine this to questions that they can answer. Okay. Go ahead, Tim. Um, I have questions of uh, fourteen questions in front of me, and um, some of them are very good questions. And I'm 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 disappointed that uh, uh, she wasn't uh, bringing them up um, here today. And I would like to address uh, some of the issues that she raises in these questions without going through all fourteen. Uh, one thing is uh, whether or not the staff is a is a government, uh, and I wanted to clarify that we are not a government. Uh, we are the king's staff. Uh, we were uh, brought on uh, by uh, the king to perform certain um, jobs and tasks uh, that were within her, his purview. Uh, and he couldn't do everything by himself, and so he brought on people uh, who have both the time and the job skills uh, and the training by father. Uh, you know, all of us here have been trained by father for decades. And so now that training that father gave us is, now belongs to the king, and so he is a claiming that uh, uh, to, and bringing us here to, to perform those uh, uh, activities. Uh, a government is, is uh, as what George Washington said, a, a government is, is force. Uh, but in this church, everything is done voluntarily. Uh, you are, no one is here because you were forced to be here. Um, people who donate uh, are not forced to donate. 
uh, people who uh, help us uh, with our uh, various um, activities and, and events are not uh, forced to do so. Uh, so there is no government here. Uh, uh, so it is a, it is a voluntary uh, organization. So it is not a, it, this is not a government. And I think uh, it creates a confusion when um, people try to adopt that model uh, for um, looking at the, uh, looking at the, looking at the staff and, and what we do. And uh, she refers to, um, uh, she says here, what are citizens to do with judges who place unconstitutional gag orders on people nation or reason and, and treat non-citizens the same as citizens? Um, and, um, some of this I don't understand what she means by non-citizens and citizens, but um, the, uh, I argued uh, very strongly against uh, the king appointing a judge under the Constitution of the United States of China Group because, because it would be a violation of the Constitution. Uh, according to the Constitution of the United States of China Group, the king cannot appoint a judge. Uh, the, for example, the Supreme Court, uh, he can nominate uh, or he can appoint, but that appointment has to be confirmed by a Senate. And since we don't have a Senate, uh, the, under the United States of China Group Constitution, the king does not have the power to uh, appoint a judge. And I, I, I did not want to see the king violating the Constitution before it even came into, uh, before the, the country even came into existence. <clears throat> Now, he, he appointed a judge, but this was um, um, aside from uh, the Constitution of the United States of China. So once you put that Constitution aside, he can do anything he wants because he is the uh, he, he is, uh, our father's uh, uh, inheritor uh, and um, a representative body. And um, uh, he wanted some system to be, a, some venue to be, it made available uh, so that um, uh, certain people could have could have justice served, and so he um, appointed a judge uh, outside that uh, constitution. And so, <clears throat> to to uh, say that it was an unconstitutional gag order, in my uh, uh, opinion, would be a incorrect a characterization. For one thing, you cannot really say that something is unconstitutional because only the court can decide whether something is constitutional or not. Um, and uh, since we don't have a Supreme Court. Uh, we really cannot uh, um, some argue about whether something is constitutional or not. These arguments will be made by a, before a Supreme Court uh, uh, at some future date when that, when that court uh, actually exists. She asks, so what are your salaries and who decided uh, what you are to be paid? Uh, only the king has the authority to release that information. Uh, and um, uh, well, the king decided what we were to be paid. Um, and uh, she also asks for a breakdown of uh, some of the um, items in the uh, financial statements, and I think that's a good question, and, and uh, I hope that uh, she can address that to Greg, and uh, perhaps uh, at, at maybe if she's interested, uh, still interested, then she can uh, uh, get answers uh, from that from, from Greg. Uh, that's my opinion. Yeah, I think anybody that wants details of the financial statements, which are put online at our sanctuary-pa.org uh, site, uh, if anybody has concerns on how money is being spent, you can send an email to me and I'll give you, a, you know, work with Susan uh, Runhofer in getting a detailed uh, report sent to you on how expenses are, are spent. Um, basically, the king has uh, total on all expenditures at Sanctuary. Uh, there's not one expense really that uh, is made any, you know, of significance that doesn't have the king's approval. And... Uh, if somebody has a financial or, or has a proposal, uh, they come to me usually with a proposal, and then I, I talk to them and kind of clarify the proposal so it's clear in my mind, and then I bring it up to the king uh, at our international meetings usually, and then if he gets, uh, if there's a basic approval there, then I bring it to the financial committee. Once the financial committee approves, then it's brought back to the king for his signature. So it's a very systematic way but the king has uh, veto rights he has uh, nothing of significant expenses uh, done without his absolute understanding and uh, blessing and that's something uh, that that's the way it was set up from the very beginning so if anybody has a uh, proposal that they would like to implement then uh, you know usually we you know a proposal is drawn up and then we try to get multiple quotes on things so whether it's building improvements or some kind of education thing related to what Carrier Richard is doing, then you know we try to try to find out the best economic uh, plan, and then we present it to the king 
for his uh, initial approval, then it's brought to the financial committee, and then brought back to the king for a signature. Okay, okay. Um, there were a couple of others on questions on there. Tim, did you want to uh, comment further? Right, if not, there were other Tim. submitted uh, yeah. questions, which I would like to introduce into the, because uh, there's been people outside the area that... Well, I, I guess I am kind of cherry-picking. Uh, I skipped this one. Why did Tim mock the citizens of the con in the Constitution? Um, you know, I, I published a post on the Facebook, and I guess that's what, I guess that this is what it's referring to. Mockery sometimes is a, an effective tool. You know, if someone is, uh, um, uh, someone is uh, under some, some delusion or, or something, I think uh, a kind of... Uh, 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 like, uh, Sometimes mockery can help them wake up. But I don't think I mocked this, the Constitution. I, I would argue that I did not. Okay. I, I think uh, Tammy had a question. Also. Oh, yes, and also Lewis does have another question, too. Maybe could we finish up the ones that are submitted from uh, offsite? The, the Kevin Brugman had a couple, and uh, I, th I see one from Ivan Jenner. Or, or do you want to go back to him? Yeah, we I think we should get priority of people sure. who are... Who are here? Who didn't have a chance to ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Tammy. Okay. Tammy O'Brien. I have a question about the uh, tenet of ostracization. I'm not sure what it's called in the. I think the Amish have a thing where if you are not following the rules, they'll all basically cut you out and you can't be part of their society. And the king has mentioned on two different occasions during service that we have to find a way to keep people out of Chungo Guk that are the undesirables. The people, although it's an individual thing, an individual can cause a great deal of harm if they posse up several people to unite with them on targeting certain individuals. So we need to have some kind of policy because if that happens, the church, one by one, can be picked off very easily. And that's my question. I mean, I, I'd like to respond. I mean, I, I haven't really thought about this issue, but look, in my opinion, we're trying to grow the kingdom of God, <laughs> and we believe that we, we have the precious words of the Lord, the second advent, and we have the precious words of his son. So rather than thinking about excluding people and judging people and thinking about, I mean, to me, this is something that I do not agree with. Now, if, if, if someone is truly multiplying anger, resentment, and hatred, then they definitely should be talked to. But I don't, I don't agree with, the, I mean, I actually wrote something and put it on Facebook, and I, I don't even like to do that on certain topics about this very issue, because Look, by definition, the kingdom of God should be, I think it has something to do with lo love. <laughs> love, right? Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor. I, th I think that's what it's about. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So in my view, ostracism is not, to me, th that is at the bottom of the list. That's at the bottom of the list. And if, if there's a brother or sister who's causing you a problem, talk, talk to that person and, and tell them you're being a jerk or whatever you want to say to them. But, you know, I, I, to me, there's a spirit of judgmental, there's a judgmental spirit which I think is not from God. Okay? And, and I, I, I do not agree with it. And I think it's really... And I think Hyunjinim, I, 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 without going into details, I can assure you that Hyunjinim has spoken to several people about this issue and has tried to help s certain people to, to approach their discipleship. I, I believe we're disciples, right? We're meant to be disciples, right? And so I, to me, this is wrong. We, we shouldn't be excluding and ostracizing each other, I, uh, uh, unless there's a very extreme case. But uh, Je Jesus said very clearly, actually, I believe it's in the book of Ephesians. Uh, Bill, is that true? Uh, where Jesus says, if you, 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 have a, you have a problem with your brother, or it'll be St. Paul, I'm sorry, St. Paul, okay. Where he says, you, you go talk to your brother, and 
complain, you know, make a complaint face to face. If that doesn't work, get two or three witnesses and go back and try to resolve the issue. If that doesn't work, go to the whole church community. And if that doesn't work and this person is still causing harm in the opinion of the whole community, then you can talk about, you know, uh, ostracism. It's the last, it's the last resort. But um, I don't think, I don't think, I don't know of anyone who's robbed a bank lately or, or you know, I don't, I don't know of any major uh, offense. So. Go ahead, Tim. In terms of the uh, United States of Chernigov, the Constitution does have a provision uh, that uh, gives Congress the power to establish a uniform rule of naturalization. For example, in the United States of America, there was a time when on your visa application you were asked whether you were a communist. Uh, and that was a, a grounds, I think, for um, a possible exclusion from the country. You were not allowed to enter the country. You were not allowed to become a citizen uh, if you were a communist, I believe. Uh, um, so that kind of a thing, um, for example, maybe you know, certain uh, pedophiles or something like that, people have been convicted of, uh, of a sexual crimes, for example. If the Congress chooses, it can pass a law. Uh, but that's not, that detail is not in the Constitution, but it gives the power to pass that kind of a law. In terms of the church, uh, my understanding is that there are only one group of people who are excluded. Uh, that is the people who participated in the um, uh, conference or the meeting uh, in uh, the hospital in August 2012, where, there, where it was discussed whether or not to uh, turn off a father's uh, life support system, and those people who either uh, said yes, let's turn it off, or those people who remained quiet while the other people were um, advocating a turning off the system. Uh, those people, if they come here, they have, uh, well, okay, one person has, but uh, before I arrived here, uh, but if they come here, then I will ask the king whether they can be um, admitted to the church. Um, other than that, anyone who comes to the church with a purpose to praise and worship God, um, I'm not going to turn away, and, and I would, uh, if someone else tries to turn them away, I would, I would argue against it. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, we've, we've got uh, now three people in, in the queue. Uh, I'll go on order of the ones that uh, notified me they want to speak. Lewis next, and then Miho, then Bill, and I think Robert also had a... Can you ask Kevin's question? I'm sorry? You can ask Kevin's question. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll work that in. We'll, I will. We'll get it. Thank you, Just Lewis. Very quickly, in light of the fact this is a town hall meeting, a lot of things have been brought up, but I think everybody's done pretty good, all things considering. Um, I have a practical question. Uh, I have three very eligible men at home, sons that need to be blessed. What plans does the, does the uh, Sanctuary Church have to uh, expand on that? Okay, so, okay, I have very mixed feelings about this topic. Uh, Okay, so let, let me, there's actually several answers to this. Number one, if your son would like to be considered by other sanctuary families for possible matching, they should post their profile on sanctuaryblessedlife.org. Okay, okay they, they should do that. Then other people around the country and around the world will know that they are eligible. That's great. Okay, so they definitely should do that right. Okay. Then secondly, Dorit Smith has organized uh, workshops for people interested in the matching and blessing, and th it would be a good idea for them to come to that, and then they can be educated more about the practice and uh, strategies and philosophy of matching and blessing, the meaning of the blessing, this kind of thing. And they can meet other people who are also interested. That's the second thing. Uh, I'm actually open to more suggestions. I mean, I have to say that every Thursday we hear reports from Korean Japan, and I always feel I feel just Mrs. Arakawa because she is she's like a prize fighter, and she's doing so many things in this area. You know, she's matching people, and she's having conferences and people are coming, the parents come and they introduce their children and have photos of their children and, and like a slacker compared to her. <laughs> but uh, but we, do, we do have, you know, these biannual, uh, twice a year, you know, these, uh, these uh, workshops. So that's my answer. Just to give you uh, an idea of what Mrs. Jacob is doing, uh, 
Recently, I had um, uh, meetings of parents who want their children to receive the blessing, uh, who, who have children that they want to be blessed. And uh, this was held in three different locations around Japan. And uh, in these meetings, uh, the parents would come and they would bring their children and, then, and each uh, parent would uh, get up and, and introduce their child. And then after that, uh, they would break up, you know, into um, pairs of people who are interested in each other's child. And, um, uh, and so, you know, sometimes uh, pairs or, or couples are, are born from that, are, create, are arranged by that. Um, so it, it's the parents who are in the, um, who are in the driver's seat in this. So the, but Mrs. Eriko is providing the venue where this kind of thing can happen. And if people want uh, that kind of thing to happen here, I'm sure that uh, someone mm -hmm. sitting two seats to my left would be uh, happy to uh, arrange it. Two seats <laughs> to my left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so that, that's one thing she's doing. And also she has uh, a number of uh, one-day seminars she will go around the country, I don't know how many she's done, um, quite a few, one-day seminars where in the morning she will get a, uh, a lecture, uh, usually a lecture from that area where she is or, or, or someone who can be there, to give uh, a brief uh, uh, divine principle lecture, just maybe three hours or like that, cover the whole thing. And then in the afternoon uh, she will give um, uh, a talk on the meaning and significance of the blessing. Uh, and then these are given to um, blessing candidates, so the candidates themselves, not, not all the parents also attend these, but, uh, uh, but the focus is on the candidates at the time. And people are educated about the blessing uh, through uh, those kinds of um, uh, events and, and eventually um, uh, maybe couples are, are, are created out of that. But of course, Mrs. Edikam has a, a very strong track record. You know, if you submit a name, if you submitted information to Eriko and says, please find a match uh, for this person, in a couple of weeks, she will, she will come back to you. It's better than Yenta, huh? <laughs> she is a real matchmaker. She is, maybe some of your, a couple of your sons, I don't know, talk to her the next time she's here. Yeah? That's basically a good question, thank you. Okay. Okay, we've got a couple more. And just a reminder, let's keep it to questions, not commentary on, uh, on, on past... Uh, situations that have happened but uh, yeah so for the remainder let's uh, keep in the spirit of Q&A okay thank you okay go ahead Mio good evening my name is Miho Panza okay I just like to uh, say and one question with to, to Lotus um, how much we appreciate the of them they put life to support king and queen they work so hard they are not, and then they put life to really work hard for church, all right? Just uh, and please understand how much they really put effort with their life to be here, okay? All right, then I have a question to Lotus. Are you going to say sorry to Jumar front of, uh, you know, front of, or a brother and sisters. Uh, she already did that, right? Uh, yeah, I think you were not here at the beginning of the meeting. She she did yeah. that today. She gave a heartfelt apology. She did that today. Yeah, not to hear. I, as I know, many brothers and sisters heard from me from Lotus and then Jumaru's point. Some people lost power to be in the church, yeah. and then some people really struggled from from their arguing. So. I'm so happy to uh, say the story and then, no. But it's not only here problem. The world has a uh, want to know this kind of wonderful, you know, uh, repentance in front of brothers and sisters. Because I know even in America, many leaders, also brothers and sisters, are concerned about it. And then uh, also, I no more after this uh, issue, do not bring any problem between you and the Lord Jumar to the world, okay? I'm sorry, it, it's uh, very, very important for, for, 
for citizen, okay? Just want to make sure, do not go up down like this. If you say sorry, this is the last, last words to not fight anymore, okay? Please, that's what I want to try to ask you, and we love you. I really thank you for to you, yes. too, yes. all right? But uh, many brothers and sisters have a painful heart, more than maybe more than you sometimes. I cried, me too, I cried. Once King started to talk about this issue, oh my, I couldn't stop tears because how much King is worried about you guys and worried about you know, church too. So we wanna make beautiful church together. Also, one more thing, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. This okay. place is headquarter for the world. Each event, many brothers and sisters come from all over the world. Welcome them, you know, with sincere heart, and welcome them to be here, you know, as a headquarter, as a king queen together. As please, we can grow up a little more, not judging each other. We can make beautiful. Uh... Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Bill. Okay, was there a question? Did, did Actually, there was. Okay, Lord S.D. Oh. Yes, yes. I... That, that's the answer. Well, it's on tape, so this is on tape. I asked the king last Sunday, and I, um, he didn't call on me, so, yeah. Uh, my name is Bill Brunhofer, and my question is about this wonderful community, which I view in the Chona Luke Providence as a free association and sisters, and um, I, I agree with what Greg said, is uh, the Chonico Constitution and citizenship and sovereignty are the ideals that we uphold, and that we aspire to, and that we uh, take up pieces of those and we try to embody those and bring those and incorporate those into our life so that we can build that community which, which creates the, the state and then the nation. It's a building block. We're here building that block right here. Um, I, my question is about the um, kind of there's a there's a kind of a dichotomy between like staff we have paid staff and we have volunteer staff and those 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 who are contributing so much to this community and uh, and it seems like I don't know why we have a why we think about them in different ways because they represent this community in a public way so any whether you're paid or you're unpaid staff whether you're paid contributor unpaid contributor. We're all part of uh, being the, the public face of, of contribution to this community. Lowell and I have the, the wonderful blessing to be able to uh, coordinate Bible study and announcements are made and, and so forth and statements made. And, and then we, 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 um, we conduct that st study here on the premises. So in my view, well, we're public people. We're part of the face of this community and therefore uh, I, I agree with Tim that having some sort of governing document is, 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 is uh, yeah. needed to, to represent, even as Robert said, the mission statement, et cetera. Uh, but also that within that there, there might even be uh, associations freely meet based on common ground and common agreement. And therefore something like a, a, a code of conduct is a reflection of the values and, and in terms of treatment of one another and ethics. Uh, that we substantiate in a word, and then we seek to embody that word in our relationship for public figures. And so what is your view on this idea of um, the, the, uh, who is a public face of this community? And is it uh, only, only paid staff? Is it volunteers? And why is there, a, is there a difference? And if there is, why is there a difference? And then, and then in terms of treatment. Okay, yeah, I'd like to respond to this. Yeah. I, I have to say that Bill's making a very important point. Anyone called to service, anybody, whether, whether the person's paid or not, is serving the king, the second king of Channel Gook. Period. Period. Okay. So, yeah, so it is true that for whatever reason, uh, Hyunjin asked the four of us to, to work full time, I guess you could say, but that doesn't mean that it, 
But he, he chose to do that for his own reasons, okay? You can ask him why he chose. Maybe you can say, boy, that guy Richard, you made a big mistake. You know, you could say, tell that to him. But, <laughs> but, you know, everyone here is, we're all called to public service. All, all of us are. All of us are in position. And, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I told Jamal, I told Jamal, Jamal, you are, you know, the term archangel Okay, God had Adam and Eve, and there were three archangels, okay? So one of the archangels was a pedophile, okay? I'm sorry what happened. But the two other archangels, Michael and Gabriel, as far as we know, they were loyal, faithful servants of God and Adam and Eve, okay? So the term archangel should not be a curse word. It shouldn't be, oh, you're a blanking, blank, blank, blank archangel, <laughs> That is totally wrong, and all of us. And and I told I told you, Moss, you know, you're uh, in the position of youth pastor. You have a very important position that the king trusts you to guide our young people, and you're actually a quote archangel. Okay, so uh, to me, th these labels that people put on each other, uh, to me, they're not very. Th they 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 shed more darkness than light, in my opinion. And so, now, it is, that said, if, if anybody has, a, you know, concern or grievance against somebody here, up here, or, or anybody, you know, Jamal or any other person who's doing public service, then you have a right to talk to them and, and, and ask them why they're doing what they're doing. But I mean, to me, I, I mean, I, I agree with you, the premise of your question, though. Yes. I think it would be good to have, uh, you know, we're, I think we're a little bit lacking in the, uh, like the HR division of sanctuary, you know, where, uh, you know, a code of conduct is probably a good thing uh, because, again, we are here through free association, and if somebody doesn't want to abide by basic uh, code of conduct standards that state sanctuary puts out, then they can make their own association somewhere else. But I, I personally think it would be good to have a, a fundamental Christian code of conduct, that we treat each other with respect and we honor each other. And uh, to, that if we have disagreements, we don't uh, put it out online to the world to see. We first like the biblical principle of going face to face and then with three witnesses. I think that's the Christian uh, principles and ethics that we should be uh, abiding by and uh, that as at the King's Church and uh, we can put forth those uh, code of ethics and present them to the king to see if if there's agreement there and then uh, anybody who wants to live outside of that code of conduct they're certainly free to form their own uh, organizations and associations and churches uh, that they that they want to create their own code, code of conduct but I think as a Christian church representing the king, I think it's very important we have a code of conduct, that we aren't just free to uh, uh, defile others or harass others or to, to publicly complain about others. That's very unchristian, actually. And it's, it, it really does uh, hurt uh, our overall mission of attracting good Christians to uh, the Lord of the Second Advent. I, I think we're doing a great disservice uh, to Father and uh, I don't see the king behaving in such a way. I see nothing but appreciation and love coming from the king toward the first responders of, of, uh, of the second king, of the three kingship providence. And I think if we're really serious about uh, living a life that's in attendance to the three kingships, we should be paying attention how they behave, how they treat others. And anything different than that, I think you're, we're doing a disservice to the king. I think we, all of us should do our best to avoid the language of uh, hatred and resentment. Yeah. Well, um, I think we need to move along. Uh, Lourdes? I'm just a brief comment. I, I actually welcome everyone's feedback as far as uh, Jamal or others that wants to tell me where I should change. I mean, there's a lot of things that I need to learn to do this job well. I welcome that. I want you to please, I can give you my cell phone number. But in reality, it's, it's really harmful if you go online in front of thousands of people, you know, innocent people, and you start, I mean, saying horrendous things about other people. You know, that is something I ask. 
place, you know. It, it's really harmful. It's really harmful. And I think what Mule was asking was that uh, you not respond to that kind of a thing on... Uh, on, uh, on uh, oh, I don't. Because it, it, it takes two to fight, so... Yeah. Yes. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> you see, that's what my mother taught me. Oh, show me where I answered, please. I, I don't have a... Okay, as we continue on, I, I got to ask the panel a housekeeping question because originally we were planning on going until 5. We do have uh, Kyle, uh, Roseanne, and... I, I, I think we should stay here a little bit longer so that everyone can ask their question. Yeah. Okay. And I people can leave if they go, oh, then, but I, I would like to let everyone ask their question. Yeah, I think we're, where we're standing now is Kyle, then Roseanne, then who else is on Kia? Janine. Oh, Janine yeah. and Robert. Yeah. Looks like that's what we got right now. I'm Kyle Toffey, and I'm part of this community here. Um, I have a question, and, and that is, are there any plans on taking the sanctuary movement on a road show in the United States? Uh, actually, I, I find it so amazing that uh, Richard Panzer is, is so versed in talking to people about what we are doing and so forth. We do have these communities that are maybe in Missouri or, or L.A. or uh, San Francisco. They're not solid at all. But having a representative come from yeah. our community here on an invitational basis uh, might be very effective in kind of solidifying uh, people's understanding of who we are, what we're trying to do, and what we're trying to accomplish. And I nominate. Richard Panzer. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. It, it reminds me of the uh, General Sherman, who if nominated, I will not serve. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, That's your job. Okay. Yeah. But actually, I, I actually have traveled uh, by invitation to North Carolina and to Massachusetts. The, the committee, uh, actually, Massachusetts invited me twice, and I, I went there twice. So if there is a uh, community that wants to invite me, I, I'm willing to go there. I, I'm not, I don't charge anything, but I usually ask them to, to cover the travel expense. Then that's basically it. And if they can f put a, a sp space on their, on their floor where I can, I can sleep, that's good enough for me. I don't need to have anything fancy. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to go. Yeah. I, yeah. Thank you, Roseanne. And, and just one more thing I want to say. For those of you, hopefully all of you know, but every Monday night we have a, a Zoom meeting at 9 o'clock Eastern Time every single Monday night. Uh, and you're welcome to join. And it, we, you hear what other people are doing around the country. Uh, uh, and sometimes it's from other countries as well, but mostly in the United States and Canada. And you're welcome to join. And if you've not been receiving invitations and you want to, then let me know. Hi, I am Roseanne Cameron. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for this meeting. I think it's been very, very helpful. I think we had a need for that. Um, I think also um, was good. We, we, I think we covered so much. And my next question, my question is actually, how often could we do this? My, shall we meet a certain every two months, or shall we call a meeting when we feel that we are starting to build up a lot of questions? Mm -hmm. Do we have a plan for that? It's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, <we do>. <laughs> <laughs> good question. For time to answer. I think. Uh, I think. <laughs> I think maybe, I was thinking that maybe quarterly might be good. Okay. Every, uh, I actually every, uh, think that we should be the ones asking you that question. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's true. All right, so if you ask, I would take your answer, and I agree with, um, I think, with, uh, with Greg. I think we needed to have at least once every three or four months. I think mm. it would be great. Because as we grow, I think we will have different needs and different questions and different things we don't need anymore. So. Uh, but I just want to bring it out also. One thing is, like, I, I agree, gratitude for all of us. Some people carry a, a very big load representing all of us, but I think we are all here, body of Christ, and we are all very important, you know? That's right. Without a head, the foot doesn't know where to go, but without a feet, 
the head doesn't move anywhere either. So I think we really are precious to each other, right. to Hyunjinim and Yananim. You know, I, I think we, we have differences, but I think our qualities are much stronger than our differences. Yeah. And I think we have an amazing, amazing group of people here. And I believe that we're not many, but I really believe that one person with God represents 400 without it. So we have quite a bunch of people here. And uh, I think we are all amazing people. And, uh, Thank you. You know, with our Bible studies, with the things that we offer online, with our university, we're being really transformed for a better, you know? Speaking to ourselves, I mean, we can tell the deep difference that we are now since we beginning. We are totally wandering land, no idea, you know, trying to figure it out. But now this is a real safe ground. And I think we have so much to offer. So really, let's speaking for myself, I've been praying what God really wants me to offer, you know, so we can share, we can build this an amazing community. I think we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roseanne, very much. Uh, Janine, do you want to? You want to? Oh, Robert. Um, Robert. Okay, you guys fight it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, ladies first. Very good. Uh, sorry. Okay, this is a question that came to mind because of what happened in the some of the interactions here. So, the question question is. Um, uh, I associate to Tim, and it is that um, considering that Kristen Quinn came all the way from Missouri to share her opinion and questions, and she got up here, which is not always easy because we're not always all public speakers, and I can testify to that. And um, I feel like she was actually mistreated by you, Tim. She was cut short a very, in a way that I would consider almost abusive. Anyway, that may be not your opinion, but, and you're not the moderator, we have a moderator here. So she wanted to say the questions her way, and you, you cut in and said, oh, well, look at this, look at this, and, and then you said, oh, you can open the door or something, and somebody else seconded. No, 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 no. I'd, I'd like to answer. Okay, so why, what gives you the authority to do that? I could answer that. Okay. Um, Kristen was, was um, not asking a question. She was making a statement. She came in and said that uh, she had presented a document and received the uh, King's approval on that document. And so okay. uh, she was um, uh, telling us about that document. Um, and uh, but this, this meeting was not... Um, uh, prepared for that purpose, and uh, she was taking up, many people here have questions, and we're going over time now, uh, and she was taking up time that other people uh, could use to ask questions. So in that sense, um, I felt that she was uh, uh, out of order, and it is my uh, right to, and I did raise it with the MC, that, uh, uh, that uh, a, a point of order, and I think that I was uh, correct in doing that. Also, um, and so I, I tried to answer some of the questions that she had sent in by email, which I had in front of me, but then she said that she was not interested in those, in those answers. So what was she doing here then? Uh, she was uh, promoting or publicizing some kind of a document, but that, that could be done in a, in a separate venue, um, and that's not the purpose of this meeting. Uh, so I did, I did uh, uh, speak uh, forcefully, but I felt that it was necessary to uh, maintain the uh, integrity of this meeting. Well, you were telling her to kind of get out almost. Well, yeah, I was telling her that uh, if she's, because she, she said she's not interested in, in uh, um, I did say uh, we don't belong here, and what I meant by belong here was uh, in this meeting, because this meeting has a certain purpose, and uh, she was not um, willing to conform to that purpose, uh, then I felt that, yeah, uh, if she's not going to conform to the purpose, then what is she doing here? Uh, you, all of you have taken time on different things, not only the questions, all of you. Not, not only Kristen. But, uh, but I think uh, everyone who, other than Kristen, Kristen who has spoken, has contributed to the purpose of the meeting. 
I, be I believe that she was an exception. I think she was bringing up something important and something she talked to the king about. So yes. I think it was important. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. And there we are didn't other. Didn't hear hear the rest of it. There, there are other places where she she can do that. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway. That was my opinion. That was why I, I spoke right. in that way. All right. Okay. Okay. Maybe I could add just a just a little bit and. Um, as a, as a moderator, we, everyone knows that there are very strong and people rightfully have strong emotion. This is not really the, the place to uh, promote your position or, you know, to, to set up, not a debate, debate's not the right word, but more like a contentious relationship or to maybe venting off, venting off, blowing steam maybe in a way is a valuable thing, but, uh, I, I think that as this was the this this uh, Q and A was set up, that this is taken into consideration, and um, uh, just we, I think we want to keep it to questions and answers because uh, yeah, and again, not I'm not saying that in criticism, Kristen, don't don't misunderstand me. I know there's especially in your case, you have very few opportunities to come here and speak to the king or speak to any of the uh, you know the people on staff, and I, 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 I respect and I honor your, your emotion because you're a dedicated and passionate person. So if you think you're seeing injustice, uh, you normally want to respond to that. And nobody's, nobody's uh, I don't think anybody's uh, downplaying that or especially criticizing that. That's, that's a human, and especially as a queen, that's a queenly emotion and, and uh, so, I hope that even though maybe maybe this hasn't worked out to the full extent of everybody's hope and expectation, let's embrace the good progress that has been made because I feel that there has been a lot of progress made today. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, you're going to have to come back. We all want to hear you, so okay. no, you're good. Robert has a question, I think. Okay, and is there any others, or are we going to wrap with Robert's? Is it? And then go, oh. go to the remote. Okay. okay, yeah, go ahead, Robert. You can no, go. No, if you have a short question, I, I tend to have, I have like three. So I need to be very short. Since I heard we may have a meeting every three months. Okay. It would be good to, for each one to do a report on one aspect yeah. of our activities, because reporting is very important. Yeah. Mm. So if we take one, you can't report on everything, but it, one area is the World Mission Department or education or facility, whatever. Use the opportunity to do a, a small report so we can bring up the snuff. Yeah. It's a good, good, good comment. Very good. Thank you. Robert? Yeah, and to the uh, moderator coordinator, after me, we're going to go to remote questions, correct? Uh, or at least a few of them. Yeah, I know have, Kevin Brugman. Yeah, we have two questions by Kevin. Yeah. There, okay. there are a few. Could I, could I exercise just uh, my own judgment? I've read his questions a few times. I think they've been pretty solidly answered already. Uh, we can bring the, uh, I'll let that up to the panel because you guys are also familiar with the, the questions that are on the sheet here. Uh, we can certainly do it if you want to verbalize I, yeah, directly. I, 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 I'll give a very fast version. Uh, yeah, I'll respond sure. quickly. Okay. To, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, one of the one of the three parts about this meeting was questions and answers, the roles of the staff, financial, and then the one was uh, conflict resolution inside the community. And my questions are going to pertain to that. First off, um, I'm just going to give an open floor. Any of the four uh, staff here in front at the table willing to state anything about conflict resolution inside the community, since it wasn't formally stated a process or something? Yeah, we do have a process, uh, although it's very it might infancy stage uh, we have had a, a grievance session uh, 
I would say even your situation with uh, you know ongoing dialogue, but I think it needs to be worked on. I would like to see somebody in the community that takes up that role as a uh, a moderator or a grievance uh, person other than somebody that's on the staff. I think it would be better if that was a volunteer position, somebody that could hear out uh, both sides and uh, be able to bring reconciliation. Uh, so that's something that I'm interested in in uh, developing, uh, a place where people can and it's a safe, a safe environment for people to express their uh, conflicts if they can't resolve it personally. So it's something that I think needs to be worked on. Okay, thank you. Um, then this is the second question. I have to give a little premise to it. But uh, often when the second king himself spoke many times in services, he would mention Jamal and Lourdes's uh, conflict and situation. And often there was a third name floating around, mine. And as such, yes, I've been deeply involved in it and that. Um, the thing is, is if with the permission of the panel, I'm, I would like to take three minutes to give my perspective on the Jamal Lourdes court case, what it is concluded to at this point, if that's permissible with your permission. I, I don't mind. Don't go more than three minutes. Yeah, three minutes is what I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think it is obvious that Lourdes and I do not gel together personally. That, that's not news to anybody. But beyond that, um, many people have had friction with her. In the course of that, a group of people gathered to how to try and bring a resolution. It was not about bringing Lourdes down, even though there's many strong feelings and opinions. The conclusion of that group was, she is God's daughter. She works and serves for the king. She works very hard for the king, directly. But there are things that she does to her brothers and sisters habitually that are very painful and very difficult. And everything that we have tried, and myself personally even, face-to-face -face meetings, meetings with witnesses and other people there to go through it, and they're very painful and time-consuming, have come to naught. The painful things that Lourdes habitually did, she continued to do. And at wit's end. That's where, when looking at it and with a lot of prayer and discussion, the idea was, how do we deal with this? And the concept came very clearly. It's through God's word. And what is God's word for us in this time and situation? We said, well, when the Israelites came out of Canaan, they went to Sinai, God gave the Ten Commandments. Obviously, they didn't have a nation, but God gave his word. Yes, so we took that on faith and said, let's look at God's word and the Constitution. Without getting into all the details, that's why there was the filing under the Constitution. Now, it's a miracle that the king gave us a court to be guided by the principles of Chunyal Guk. No one's denying that we don't have sovereignty or anything like that. But God has clearly expressed that his ideal is to be framed by his constitution. And we want to embody those principles and we want to use them even in difficult situations between brothers and sisters. Also, the other thing was, 
And this was very clear. And I want to say this directly to you, Lourdes. I know from a long time you've said, I've wanted to kick you out, I've wanted to remove you, or I wanted your job. Those are all false impressions. Actually, among the group, almost everyone wanted you gone. They wanted to see you gone. And I'm talking about the group that, I, that was having this meeting, Doug, and that. Okay. I was the only one that said, no, you cannot ask for her to be gone. Even though I have difficulty with you, Lourdes, the king put you there. I have stood up for you every time someone has asked for you to be gone. I want you to know that. I've even in front of the king and his brother stood up for you and say, they put you there. No one has any right to ask for you to be gone. You know, also, because of that, the only thing we could ask of you is that you repent and apologize and cease doing this again. Those were the requests for relief under the filing. The sad point from my perspective is, is the king formed the court, all the difficulties going to get it go through, everything. And at the end, Jamal withdrew. So what happens is the process never went forward, and we are where we are. I'm sorry about that. I wish it had gone forward personally. Okay. So that's my statement. I'm sorry, maybe four minutes, Richard, or five. Actually, six minutes, but it's okay. <laughs> all right, thank you. I <laughs> indulge you. That's all. Now, I, I just have two final questions, and this is for Lourdes. No, very, very short, very, very, very short questions. Lourdes, I have invested in trying to resolve with you. If I put the time forward, are you willing to honestly sit down with me yes. and re work to resolve the situation yes. between us? Thank you. The second question is, and this is to the internet, everything else. I have to deal with people online that you send messages to and that you gin up and you feed them information that they come at me. I just sincerely ask, can people talk about Jamal shooting on the inside? Can you please stop shooting at the two of us? And I will work with you to resolve this. OK? That's my pledge to you as my sister. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. But by the way, I just want you to know that you're not the only one who who said, "Lordus, delete your comments." She deleted my com <laughs> she deleted my comments, and I was supposed to be your president, and you delete my comments too. <laughs> I'm a cleaner. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Robert. Very heartfelt, and we're really glad for your clarification of many many of the things that you said. Thank you. Yes, alpha male. Give him a hand. I see one more hand. Can we extend a little longer? Luz, we'd like to hear from you, sure. Okay, because uh, I lost myself and before, but the question is directly to Lourdes, because she was always ready to say something, and you say no. Uh, me too, and we like to sit down, like, again, I always hear Jamal and Lourdes. Hey, what about me? I know her more time and more issues. So I want to sit down and talk to her because I did all, like again, I'm a Christian. I, I approached her a long time ago. Nothing. I bring uh, witness, this and this and that. And I would like also to close the page. I need to move on also. And, but please, because, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Uh, I think somebody interrupt you when uh, Mijo says to you something and you say, oh, my job. Please, sister, your job is wonderful. You have been held the king a lot. I can even people say here, oh, you are multitask. I can, I will not be able to do the job you do. You do. You do a great job. Let me tell you, not everybody impressed me in that area so easy. But uh, the most important thing, sister, your spiritual life. I want to see you in heaven too. You know, we want to see you in heaven. So please don't get distracted for your job to try to grow in us spiritually. And don't use neither the power or the, uh, how you can say, the trust from the king sometimes. Like Michael say, you have been heard people in private ma mex messengers eh, in Texas that they even send it to me when things, when you use the king. And please, you know how much I love that man. You know, because his father, son. So don't use him, please, I'm begging you. Starting today, I want you to separate the two things, your job and your personal spiritual life. And when you want people to do something, say, I'm Lourdes who say that, but please don't use human journey anymore. Please, I'm begging you, okay? And I love you, okay? You know that. Okay. I just want to say thank you, Luz. Um, that's a great advice. I appreciate it. I think uh, some of the things we do sometimes when you're in tremendous, in my case anyway, uh, it's very stressful to work with managing many people. It's not what I like to do. I, I really don't, do, they haven't brought him here knowing <laughs> that that was, um, yeah, my job. But this is not an excuse. I, I have personality issues. I have language you know, I, one of the things that I totally love, my brother Bill, is that he says, you know, in communications, there's always, it's very important that if you don't understand what that person meant, that you ask the question, please, what did you mean by that? You know, and often I, what I see that I believe and I hope and I pray that will never again is that instead of asking me, you go online and say, you know, <laughs> they say actually that you were a bitch or whatever, you know. Some really s extreme terminology is being used. And I think as, a, as a, the king is promoting this JC culture, that we have to be very conscientious. And I appreciate you work so hard every time helping me ho and you help us. Like, we, we don't even ask you. You know, you are there in the kitchen hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. We, we just cannot imagine the kind of sacrifice everyone makes here just to make the event work. You know, so I really apologize to you. If I did that to you, it's completely unfair on my part. And uh, I hope that we begin again with the new, you know, this is a new t new day for us. I, I'm not perfect. I like the King made it very clear. We have many issues that we have to resolve. In my case, you just double it, okay? <laughs> I have many more issues. I'm alone, my husband is away, it's very painful and all of that. But anyway, bottom line is we need to, to work from here on, looking forward like with Kristen and, and, and all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Luz. Hey, if I could just, just a few words to honor Luz. When we were preparing the palace before the king moved in, she worked tirelessly days preparing you. Every time you walk across that wood floor, she went over every inch of that floor, putting the new finish on it, as well as cleaning that place top to bottom. It's really a trooper. Yes. Wonderful yes. sister. Thank you, Luz, very much. Thank you, Luz. Yeah. Everybody, those things happen. People don't see, but uh, I testify to her. Uh, I saw one more hand, and it's Lisa, so I better not ignore her. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> A suggestion um, for those of us who are old fogies in the movement we used to do things when we were young in the church and that was when we didn't get along with somebody the first thing we did was serve them mm. even if it means getting a plate of their lunch before you got your own put it down and you worked without recognition I suggest that might be a good way to start to break down the barriers of our hearts 
the way we did when we were young. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Should I read the question? Oh, please, yes. Okay, uh, Kevin Brugman uh, sent two questions. Uh, first, why has not Lourdes behavior been addressed? Um, I, I think we've been talking mostly. I'm a little jealous. My son, like I mean, me. she's <laughs> so, yeah. getting all the attention, sucking all the attention here. They let me make me perfect. <laughs> um, I think we've been talking. We have been addressing um, th this issue, and I think Loris has expressed a willingness to meet with people and to work it out. And I, I have to say, I, I said this b before, but I'll say it again. I've had many disagreements with Lourdes, and I've told her in very strong terms, I think, <laughs> that we're still but, you know, I, I d don't, don't assume just because I don't write about it on Facebook that it's not happening. I, I think Facebook is probably the last place that I want to go. That's right. Sorry. Okay. Now, second question, what is the long-term goal of Sanctuary Church? That's a huge and we, I think we've had some discussion about that issue. Uh, Kingdom of Heaven. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> all right, we could spend like two hours, uh, f 10 hours to, uh, w defining what that term means, but uh, I think we'll probably leave that for the next town hall. Okay. I think the goal of Sanctuary Church is being defined as Father uh, dictates to the second king. That's the way I see. Yeah. That's the way I see things. Is that uh, the king is being guided, and even the king uh, doesn't know exactly how the providence is going to unfold. And uh, he is in prayer. He's setting conditions, and he does what he does so that he can receive guidance from heaven as to how sanctuary should develop. I mean, this is not an easy uh, to be. You know, the second king leading. Uh, the providence of God is not an easy task, and I think we owe some, owe some appreciation to the king. That's right. <laughs> uh, you, know, he's, uh, you know, he is really in a position to be obedient to heaven, and uh, it's through these conditions that he sets through bushcrafting and training with the peace ninjas and to really uh, being humble to the word of God and doing three hours of the every morning, uh, really pouring out his uh, blood, sweat, and tears every single morning, fighting uh, political Satanism. You know, all these things, he's, you know, uh, I've been with uh, the Second King for uh, since the beginning when he came here, just about the beginning, and I, I know from firsthand experience, he does know how things are going to unfold. He is really being guided every step of the way, and so I think he needs our prayers and support, but I think that's the future of Sanctuary Church, is to be, you know, to be obedient to the second king. Uh, Father said absolute love, absolute faith, and absolute obedience. And that obedience is being in alignment with God, and uh, let's just hold on to the Father and the second king, and that's the future of the Sanctuary Church. Okay, any, any more? I think we're about uh, to wrap it up. Maybe I can make one final comment, picking up something that Roseanne said. I don't see her here right now, but we're I, all, Ivan Jenner has a question, right? Oh, this, I, oh, oh go ahead. Okay, oh, I was... One more submitted. Okay. Okay. All right, this from Ivan Jenner. How long are Hyunjanim, Kukjanim, Board Directors, Sanctuary Church community going to continue to allow... Jamal and Robert to verbally abuse Lourdes towards that Sanctuary Church on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, okay, my, my answer to that is that the, hopefully by having an open meeting like this, people can actually talk with each other instead of calling each other horrible names. Uh, I, I have to say, I, I totally disagree with co some s calling people bitch, eunuch, s son of bitch. Uh, and that's even the mildest thing. I, I, to me, we are brothers and sisters in Christ's community. And to, to, for you to call my sister Lourdes a bitch, to me, is very, very wrong. Very wrong. Okay? I, and I, I totally disagree. If you have a disagreement with her, then go tell her and tell her what, why you don't like what she did. Okay? But th these insulting names t t are satanic. Th that's my perspective. Calling the daughter of God a bitch 
or a son of God, uh, you know, son of bitch, or whatever the, whatever the vile name, to me, that, that's simply wrong, okay? And that, that's how I see it. And I hope we can grow up, and if you have a problem with Lourdes or me or Tim or Greg, then talk to us. But don't go on Facebook. That, to me, that's a very cowardly thing to do, in my opinion. I think, uh, just to add to that, especially to those who are under Father's authority and the first responders, as the king has brought up on multiple occasions, these are the people very precious to God. And, you know, if you want to call a pedophile a bitch or a, a son of a bitch, that's fine, you know, because the, the king does that all, all morning long on the king's report, but his, his bullets are pointed outward. We, we do not use, we should not use that language amongst ourselves. And, uh, support what Richard said, but uh, I think that kind of vile language is appropriate when you're dealing with uh, people who are really promoting satanic culture throughout the world. Then that language, and I think Father himself used that language, and certainly the Second King uses that language. But it's it's at the enemy of God, not brothers and sisters who gave up everything to support the the Second King. I'd like to add a little bit. Um, the question asks, uh, uh, how long are A, B, C, and D going to allow uh, E and F to do a certain thing? <laughs> and um, you have to ask, where does the authority lie to allow or to disallow? Does it uh, lie with Hyung Jinim, Kuk Jinim, Board of Directors? Do they have the authority to allow or disallow this kind of behavior? Uh, uh, now, the, the fourth one is sanctuary community. I think actually the sanctuary community probably has more, most of the authority. In fact, the only one there that has authority to uh, disallow. So I think this gets to the uh, idea of ownership consciousness, that the community has to take uh, uh, ownership over this kind of a situation. The board of directors of the World Peace and Education Sanctuary has no authority to either allow or disallow uh, 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 anyone's um, uh, statements on Facebook or, or um, so that would be my answer to the, uh, to the to this question, in addition to what was already been said. Okay, with that, I think we can bring our meeting to a close. Uh, just a final comment I'd like to make is, uh, as I was going to say, Roseanne made a very good scriptural comment. Um, we're all the body of Christ. I want to thank everyone here, whether you, even if you didn't say uh, or have a question or comment, you're here. You're a part of the body. Not one part is more important than the other, right? Even we're an invisible part like a tooth. If our tooth's got a cavity in it, we'd pay attention, right? We're all, we're all a part of the body of Christ, and that's unique under Hyunjin's guidance and Father's guidance, of course. And that, what's, that, I think, is what sets us apart from anything else. So thank you, everyone that's here today and everyone that's concerned that's out in the uh, worldwide sanctuary. Can we close with a prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we're here for one reason. True Father anointed Hyungjin. Father gave his entire life. We have no clue how much he invested, how much he suffered through a course of 10,000 crosses and so many victories as well as he built up the Worldwide Foundation. And he gave that over to Hyungjin. And he is still the light of the world, shining down from the spiritual world to Hyunjadim. Father, we know that you're guiding him directly every step of the way. We want to help, Father. We want to help Hyunjin. How heavy is his burden? We don't maybe think about that often enough. Let us be mindful of how much he sacrificed and has given up his entire life now to be respond, to be a good response to Father's direction and authority as he leads him. We want to be helpful, Father. Let us find the way that we can create our own ministry, that we can create our own activity, Father, that we can contribute in the unique way that you will guide us through our conscience and through our spirit to contribute to the kingdom, Father, and really step up as the kings and queens of Channel Book. So we're grateful for this time together. Father, we honor you that you brought through through everyone that was involved, especially through Richard, to organize this event and this day. We want to offer it into your hands now. Please, Father, carry us forward from this as we close this meeting. Father, let us go forward with a new heart and a new spirit. We pray this in the name of each one represented here. Hachu. Hachu.